Welcome to Dwarven Forge. This is everything you need to know about our terrain in 60 seconds. Ready? Let's go. We hand sculpt our pieces for maximum detail and artistry, infusing passion into every millimeter of our work. Everything is available beautifully hand painted so you can start playing right away. Or you can choose unpainted to paint everything yourself. Our pieces are completely modular so you can use the same sets to create a new adventure every time. Most pieces have embedded anchor magnets that affix to our terrain trays for secure building and for revealing rooms as your players discover them. We create everything out of Dwarvenite, our top secret PVC formula that's nearly indestructible. We pack our pieces with as many features as possible, such as swappable LEDs to quickly change the look of your scene. We offer magnetic accessories to add flavor or increase the danger. A one-inch tactical grid is sculpted into our floors, hidden in dungeon flagstones, natural rocks, or sticks and plants. In addition to sculpted pieces, we make terrain trays to use as a vibrant graphic base for your build. We offer a range of environments, including dungeons, caverns, cities, castles, sewers, forests, mountains, streets, burrows, ice, and hellscape. And that's just the beginning. We have a passionate fan base who can tell you all about it. And that's everything you need to know about Dwarven Forge in 60 seconds. The games we play are the stories we create. The fortress doors swing open. Every story is unique. And the sound of war drums rises. Sometimes our stories come to us when we least expect them. We need to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Sirenscape can help make yours epic. Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has never been easier. Do you miss playing Dungeons & Dragons or just have a hard time finding a group in your hometown? Maybe you just wish you could play more. On Discord, we created a community of over 100 people who are playing D&D around the clock. I'm Noggins. Oh, see. Cece. The other strong shield. Katarina. Elder Stevie Farbaba Negra. Tayel. Daria. Kostash Morach. Elros. Falfur Softfoot. Kita Swipe's fine. Best Boy Reindeer. Misery Cordelia. Jordani Goril. Bonnie. Class Lessonic. Bragorn Iron Throne. Tom. Nabuti. Dimitri. Shalara. Barf Battlebrain. I'm Atomic Scray, mate. Shortly Frudari. Warren Greenstab. Melina Lee. Isesh Morses. Malachi Dupraki. Sarah Sklar Life Forger. Travas. Tamazar. Esmeralda Embershake. Elder Waddleby. Dustin Morses. And Morgan Reagan. Moxa Kitty. Sterling. By integrating Discord and D&D Beyond, we're able to provide an immersive experience that is the first of its kind. You can create a character from 1st to 15th level and then roleplay 24-7 in our Discord channels while combating monsters, crafting weapons, training new skills, and searching for items across our campaign world. You'll also have the chance to participate in random combat encounters and go on monthly virtual quests. Ever wanted to try your hand at being a dungeon master? Or maybe you're an experienced dungeon master and just want the chance to run more adventures. As a community DM, you can run encounters and virtual quests for the community based on monthly modules written by our very own accomplished plot team. Join us. Join us. Check it out. Join the Discord. Join us. Join us. And let's create incredible stories together.
Hello, everyone, and that is the wrong screen. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tides of Wild Mount. This is our uh, official D&D Wild Mount campaign. Um, a couple quick, awesome announcements, and then we will get moving. First off, of course, want to thank Dungeons and Dragons for creating this incredible game that we know and we love and we play every single week. Um, also want to thank uh, the Critical Role crew. First of all, massive congratulations on the incredible new animated series, Legend of Vox Machina. It was awesome. We watched it on our Realmsmith retreat this weekend. Um, while we froze our butts off, you can check Instagram for that scenario and situation. Uh, but uh, incredible series. Congratulations to them. Um, they've done an amazing job, and we're looking forward to the rest of it. Uh, also want to thank our first title sponsor, Hero Forge. Hero Forge is an incredible online tool for creating custom miniatures as well as avatars and a number of other things that you can do for your tabletop gaming experience. You can check them out at heroforge.com. Also want to thank our second main title sponsor is Sirenscape. Uh, Sirenscape is an incredible, another incredible online tool for adding ambiance and sound sets and sound effects to your tabletop games. You can check them out at sirenscape.com slash realmsmith. If you use realmsmith at the end, it lets them know that we sent you. And you can check out all of the custom content that we've created actually for Sirenscape that is also available on their platform. Also, our third main title sponsor is Last Game Board. We are very, very happy and, and excited to include them and welcome them onto the platform. Uh, it, it is an amazing technology. We are going to get one on the table soon that we will be using. But basically, it's a uh, 16 by 16 inch um, digital game board. You can see it on Champions of the Realm. We feature it on that show. Um, and you can play game boards and run your... Um, virtual tabletops and all of that stuff on them. So uh, check them out at uh, last the, sorry lastgameboard.com. Uh, they're amazing. A bunch of stuff coming up real soon, um, and more to let you know event wise. Uh, I will be DMing at D3 at C and Satine's Quest. You can check those out. Um, very excited. D3 at C is coming in March. Uh, Satine's Quest is in May. Uh, and then um, also have some other things that I can't announce just yet that we're just finalizing coming up very, very soon, which I'm very excited about as well. As far as our Discord and Patreon go, um, some awesome things continue to happen. Um, all of our um, role players within our Discord servers are really getting their hands into all of the awesomeness that exists in the role play servers. All the encounters have now been launched, and so people are doing daily encounters from our community DMs, which is a lot of fun. Uh, our Discord server is an awesome place just for TTRPG. I think there's like 800 members that you can chat with. Um, and then we have a smaller subset of people who have become patrons on our Patreon um, at patreon.com slash realmsmith. And if you become a patron at certain levels, you can enjoy our roleplay server at certain levels and you get certain benefits depending on what level you have become a patron at. Um, and we've done all kinds of awesome things, which is including automate crafting and searching and a bunch of other really awesome things. Um, check it out, uh, patreon.com slash realmsmith. And then the Discord link is also in the chat if you want to just check out that part of it as well. We've seen some pretty big growth. I think we have new patrons every day, at least one or two, um, it, since the Champions of the Realm launched. So just welcome to all the new comers. Speaking of Champions of the Realm, uh, it's been an amazing series so far. The four quarter final matches are complete. Um, we are going into the semifinals uh, this coming Wednesday. Spoiler warning for anybody who has not watched the series yet. If you haven't watched it, cover your ears and go watch the first four episodes. But this Wednesday in two days at 8 p.m. Eastern on our channel and on the Dungeons and Dragons YouTube channel, um, you will be able to watch the first match of the semifinals and that is Noor Ibrahim versus Alicia Marie. We're very excited, our very own Noor Ibrahim, excited that she has made it to the semifinals. Um, without further ado, let's show the uh, interview between Alicia Marie and Nora, and then we'll move on. It really means a lot to me that I've gotten this far. Um, I... Uh, so far, everybody's just been really evenly matched. I didn't know which way that the, the, the rounds were gonna go. So 
to be here amongst uh, real champions is, feels good. Yes, we had to know mechanics. Yes, we had to kind of know what our uh, classes could do and what our characters could do. But in the end, you know, sometimes the dice works in your favor and sometimes you throw it in the garbage disposal and turn it on. Not that I've ever done that, ever. From my last fight, I learned that even though you can be very evenly matched, which makes decisions uh, on spells and movements very difficult, um, strategy is everything. What did I learn? Um, oh, to 100% expect the unexpected. You go in with this big plan, ideas of what you're gonna do. Okay, if she gets initiative, I'll do this. If I, do initi if I get initiative, I'll do that. It's never, ever, ever, ever gonna work out any, I, I did not anticipate how that was gonna go down. I did not anticipate being grappled for most of the game. Uh, if I can say one thing to Barrowin going into this match, I would say, I fought a dwarf before, I will fight another dwarf, I will fight all the dwarves, I will win. I shed some blood. My opponent, Jamila, shed some blood. But this was with respect and dignity. And with Esmeralda, I hope that she comes into this game with strong faith, because faith is the most potent weapon. I do like her, but I do intend to destroy her. And then afterwards, we'll have a nice talk, sit down with some coffee or something. We are here at Champions of the Realm. Can't wait for that episode. Very, very excited to see what happens. Um, there are three episodes left. So the two semifinals and then the final. It has been an incredible season thus far, and we're just so honored to have been able to do this experience, take part in it, and um, hopefully do it again in the near future. So very, very excited. Um, I want to thank our Smith Guardians and our Realm Watchers. They are the core of our community when it comes to uh, creating content for our Discord and for moderating not only the shows, but also our Discord community. Um, we do have merch. You can check it out below each of the videos um, on Twitch and on YouTube. Um, we have lots of things, including masks and shirts and sweaters and all kinds of awesomeness when it comes to the merchandise that we offer. We also offer uh, official um, Champions of the Realm merchandise through Mithril. That link is also, I believe, in the chat. Uh, and anything that you want to know about Champions of the Realm, really, if you go to championsofthealm.com, we've got everything uh, that you might want on that site. Uh, this Thursday, uh, we have Aftermath. We typically talk for half hour about uh, Champions of the Realm. And then for the second half, we'll talk about Tides of Wild Mount and the things that have happened this season. So we will have some special guests to discuss those things. Um, last week we had Anna Prosser, the week before we had Alicia Marie on, um, and it's been really great. So go and check out th those episodes actually. Lots of insight into past uh, episodes of Champions of the Realm, um, which was a lot of fun. I wanna thank those folks for joining us. If you like what you see tonight, consider subscribing and sharing. Hit that bell icon on YouTube and follow us on Twitch. And without further ado, let us venture into the wild.
All right, we are back uh, for Tides of Wild Mount. Very excited. This is episode four of our Tides of Wild Mount campaign, uh, season three. Um, all right, uh, you can see that there is an empty chair. Joel is currently in the trenches uh, doing some other things that were important, uh, including getting Champions of the Realm next episode out. Uh, and so we are hard at work doing that, and he needed the night off from the stream, so we let him go and wish him the best, and he will be back, of course, uh, hopefully next week. Um, all right. Last we left you all, um, you are in Trostenwald. You had uh, traveled here to kind of get some a bit of rest as a stop to uh, get some much-needed supplies. Um, you know, Gaziel had mentioned potentially getting some mounts so that it would be easier to traverse uh, the Merrow Valley on your way north to the Bromkiln Hills in search of Volantum, the secret um, mystery city out in the Sirius Mountains. Um, while in Trostenwald, the first thing that you all wanted to do, or at least some of you wanted to do, was to experience uh, Trost, which is the ale that is that makes Trostenwald uh, famous. Um, and this ale is sent all over um, the Merrow Valley and the Empire specifically, even passed into uh, the Menagerie Coast. And it is their biggest export. You headed to the Mud Hole Tavern, um, where uh, Plunk and Sira <laughs> enjoyed some of it. Uh, Snow did as well, but having lived the pirate life has built up a bit more of a, um, what's the word? Tolerance. Uh, tolerance, thank you for that sort of uh, imbibery. <laughs> um, and imbibery, is that even a word? I just made it a word. <laughs> it is a word I'll today. Um, at that point, <laughs> after some uh, fun role play, uh, we... Gaziel and Bolt. Uh, and was it just the two of you? And uh, uh, Zin was taking us. And Zin was also going as well. He's right? leading us. How yeah. dare you forget uh, me? I, I didn't forget you. I just saved the best for last. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh I got, the, I got the, the silent treatment. Oh, I got the fade to black. Um, <laughs> so we go to yeah. So you guys were looking for stables um, primarily to start potentially, and a blacksmith, and there were some other things that you wanted to do while the rest of them had some fun in the tavern. Um, what do you do as you stand in front of this wagon, and there's a bit of a caravan uh, that exists that was pulling through town, and you saw that these two wagons were full of injured individuals, all of them bearing some sort of bite mark, uh, and having told the story that wolves attacked them in the Siren Green Forest, um, and bit them, but it didn't invoke any death toll. They were bitten and ravaged and then left. Yeah. Um, and they've come here um, off of their path heading north to try and get some help. Um, Gaziel healed one of them, but she's only allowed to do so much, or able, sorry, to do so much within a given day, um, at which point they obviously warn you that the Siren Green Forest is dangerous um, and not to, to go in that area. What do mm. you do? <clears throat> well, th th let me ask this question because my camp is in the Siren Green Forest. Mm. Have I seen any like notes of wolves, or is that something I'm used to hearing while I was there? Like, just packs of wolves roaming or things of that nature? Not so much. You get the sense that it's perhaps happening more north of where you were because you're so close to the border. Um, in conversation with these people, they came directly west, where you traveled north. Uh, uh, northwest, I'm sorry, northeast from where your camp was. So you imagine that the concentration of the attacks that are happening are north of where your camp was. Gotcha. Um, cool. I'll just say um, I'm sorry that you all had to deal with this inconvenience. Uh, we will, well, I cannot say we can do anything because we are but travelers, but thank you for letting us know. I was encamped in the forest, and I had not heard anything, but potentially I was not in the area of concentration. And they, you know, and, and at this point, you can see that they're completely flushed, pale, um, almost looking kind of dead forward as, you know, obviously incredibly scared, thinking maybe they would have lost their lives. And, and she kind of nods sort of blankly as you tell her that information. Um, and I would just say, um, I'm a, is there a temple or is there something around that in, in Trostenwald that 
I could lead them to, or not at least tell them where yeah. to get some potential health. Healing. Yeah. So you you know of at least one of each temple that um, of the temples that are approved within the empire. Um, in mm -hmm. various directions. And so you're able to kind of point them and tell them where they can go potentially to, to meet healers and to get the cool. the healing that they need. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay. Um, I will uh, send them off um, um, uh, at least just, you know, if you go around this area, you can find uh, someone who can get you more assistance. Sorry that we could not do much more. Thank you. Thank you. You've done... You've done much. I appreciate it. And she, again, she looks down at her arm um, from Gaziel's healing and, and looks at her and nods as the gentleman beside her yells at the person kind of piloting the wagon and they, and they start to head off again. I think if we do... Just saying this thing, yeah. Zin and Gaziel. I think if we do go into the forest, that might be a good opportunity to test out the new armor that I hopefully will get today, if not <laughs> another day, but there's always you... something that can be improved on. <laughs> Zen kind of laughs. It's one of those, like, amused chuckles more than anything. He says, you said you are a creator of armor and things of that nature, yes? I dabble. <laughs> And you think that armor would be ready for you in a day? Well, normally when I'm making the things, I can do it pretty quickly, but I guess I uh, can't impose that sort of timetable on everyone. Uh, we'll see what they come up with, though. That is true. I just, I don't want you to think that they can automatically, you know, size you and measure you and get all the things done that you want and then we can just go off. I still don't actually know why we actually came here, but I'm not mad. I'm, I said I'd join along. Gaziel kind of pokes her head out. She says, I really think we need some horses. Well, I know that we came for potential horses, but yes. past that, I thought the pathway was towards the west, north, not going back down southeast from where we were. Well, yeah, yes, I, I, um, but my understanding was this is the closest settlement to where we want to go, is it not? That's what uh, I thought. It's close enough. I would say the dash from where we were was potentially slightly closer, but it's fine. I'm not, I, again, I don't, don't take this as me being annoyed in any way, shape, or form. I was just curious. I'm merely the wanderer in a traveling troop of performers, and I am curious to know where this performance leads us next. That's all. Can everyone who's outside please give me a perception check? <sighs> that would not be me and Plunk, correct? No, that is not. You guys will be doing constitution checks very soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is a 12 for me. Natural one. Natural one. All right. You can't say natural like that. You get me excited. Natural <laughs> one. Uh, <laughs> brought to you by Forge Gaming. Um, <laughs> so at this point, um, Gaziel kind of like looks over her shoulder um, and looks at you all um, and kind of kind of nods her head in a direction to kind of point out in an individual. Uh, at this time. I would like to uh, invite our guest player for the evening to the table. Please, join us. And as Gaziel what? joins, um, they, you all see um, what is going to be introduced as soon as Julian <laughs> takes his seat at the table I'll with be, us oh, to play thing, this evening. Oh, he forgot one thing. It's <laughs> one thing. He needs to do Jesus, one thing. Jesus, Julian. <laughs> what the heck? So I am, I am. I need to be able to play. Yes. You know, I was wondering why the chair was still there. Yeah. I know you, and you're what? all about <laughs> the right. perfectionism. Yeah. That should have like, left. Can somebody turn it a little bit? <laughs> right? <laughs> Can you Hi, Julian! Poor Adam. Hi. Hi. Pardon the noise of me putting the mic on. I can't mute the board if I'm in the room that's being muted. Yes. Don't worry. We'll fill the environment with extra noise. Extra noise. Yes. La, 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 la. Oh, awesome. what do you start? Well, I was rolling money on that. There we go. Okay. Perfect. All right. Everybody right. can hear Julian okay? Because oh, now our producer fine. is in the room. I will <laughs> be producing the rest of the episode. Um, 
All right. So as Gaziel kind of looks over her shoulder to kind of one of the corners, um, and we can bring up the map, actually, you of Trostenwald that, that I up. created using Incarnate Yay. this week. Um, this here is uh, what you see. You all are at, and I know it's a little small for some folks, um, but you all are just out in front of the Old Mud Hole Tavern, and that is just south of where it says Lockward. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And you can see Lockward General just to the uh, west there a little bit. Um, and you're all outside on the hill road. Um, so to your right, you can see actually in the distance the blue waters of the Ustalok, um, which kind of head down sort of, a, sort of a grade past kind of fishing villages. And then down the west road, you see the Crowns of Guard stockade that kind of looms over above everything. Uh, and then in the in the road that goes west and kind of north called Market Street, where you can see all the market stalls sort of lining the street. That is where you all uh, started and came down. So you, uh, sorry, I'm lying. You actually came up the uh, hill road to where you are, but as you passed, you could look up, and I said that there was markets yep. kind of up the northwest road, gotcha. and that's where yep. a lot of the action happens. Um, you see an individual kind of across the street, um, and everyone else is kind of bustling by at this point, um, but through the crowd, you see an individual kind of looking in your direction, um, appearing, to, uh, appearing to potentially have kind of been listening to what has been said and taking in the wagons and the individuals who were injured on top. Uh, Julian, what do they see? Uh, well, you see someone who is uh, obviously now trying to break eye contact, uh, having been noticed. Um, but it's uh, a human individual, uh, kind of jet black hair. Um, he's got uh, just a very, very rusted looking uh, breastplate on, uh, which is like a tunic underneath. It's kind of tattered. Um, it's kind of like um, like earth tones, like beigey brown. Uh, his pants also like look tattered, like there's like patches on his pants. Um, so clearly like not very, very well to do. Um, but you do see a, a scabbard at his side, um, as well as a holster um, on his other hip. Mm. And he's just okay. sort of... He was watching, and now, uh, you know, having been noticed, he's... Uh... Does it... <laughs> can I tell if he was, like, eavesdropping? Is he trying to be, like, someone who was spying and just got caught? Like, what's the vibe? Is it, oh, crap, or is it, oh, I should probably change tactics? Insight check. I don't notice a thing. No, <laughs> you are, you didn't even notice Gaziel. You're kind of like still looking around and thinking about all the wonderful oh, things that you want to build. 22. 22. Sorry, how was that? 22. 22. 22. What does he know with the 22? Oh, no, he was eavesdropping and someone noticed. Like he saw, he saw Gaziel like point over to him and he's like, uh-oh. <laughs> does it seem like he was eavesdropping to be curious or was he eavesdropping because it was specifically this group? Uh, he seemed like... It's hard to tell just by looking at him, but he, he seemed more just interested in what was being talked about. Let's say. Okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. You can sometimes you can tell if they're focused on an individual or focused on the surrounding, and I was trying to see if he was pinpointing. Yeah, um, no, he, he was definitely more so like just tuning into the conversations that were being had. Gotcha. Noted. Okay. okay. I will look back at Gaziel and say, "Do you know this individual?" She kind of looks up. She says. Never seen him, just noticed him listening. Are you talking about me? <laughs> no, we're not talking about you. Head. What is your name again? I totally did not remember it. Ah, uh, Bolt. Bolt. Hmm. Now you're talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> I am now talking about you. I can continue talking about you if you would like me to. Well, no, that's all right. Uh, who were you talking about then? The individual across the way. Over there. And Gaziel kind of does one of these, like, to not be no, no, obvious that she's in that direction. I see <laughs> nothing conspicuous. Okay, I'm just going to go talk to him. And then she, like, turns around and she kind of, like, struts over with her hand kind of on the hilt of her hammer around around her waist. Do you guys follow? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll just... She kind of stops. Out where she's she kind of puts her, her her fists on her hips, and she looks up at you. She says, "Well, hello. Um, I, I noticed you happened to take an interest in what we were talking about. Um, I, nice uh, to meet you. Uh, no, I was just sort of um, you were uh, uh, c 
curious sort of um, group. I was just... You were I just was, stopping was and looking at you. us for quite was, a while. I, I was eavesdropping dropping on you, for sure. Yep, you got me. How curious. And she kind of does one of these, like, just kind of, like, take in your countenance. You're just sort of talking about things I was interested in, and I was listening. God. Okay. You're interested in armor? Uh, not spec- I mean, if you have some to spare, this is a rather old breastplate. I can but, see that, uh, yes. Could use a little buffing, maybe, but it's yeah. a nerd armor, then. It's, it's well beyond that sort of thing, but yes. Hmm. Uh, no, what was, piqued what? your interest more? Uh, well, um, you seem to have uh, interest in the, uh, the goings-on of the Siren Green Forest in terms of these wolf bites and things like that. Detect was... thoughts. Okay. Okay. Surface thoughts. I'm uh, going in. Completely? Right away? Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's, that's so a wisdom wisdom safe? Uh, yeah. Ooh, that's a 19 on the die. Oh yeah, that, that, that don't even. Don't even. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so not only. Don't even. Yeah, so, <laughs> not, so you still just get the surface thoughts though, right? I still get the surface thoughts, but you know that I went in. Uh, you know I attempted to do at least. Okay, uh, so I will lock eyes with you and go, um, do you normally do that sort of thing to people you've just met? I do that to people who are eavesdropping, and I don't like people coming in conversations. No, that's fair. That's, uh, yep, yeah, that's fair. Um, and then what you get surface thoughts is uh, obviously like, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Um, <laughs> wasn't expecting this. Uh, but then also you do get like general curiosity about um, that you guys are potential help. Mm. Okay. Um, and at that point, Gaziel kind of looks down the road. Uh, and you notice her kind of glance. And as she does that, you watch as a couple, like a little troop of crowns guard kind of cross um, down the street, coming from kind of north in the lockward and head west. And she says, perhaps we should potentially take this inside. And he just looks at the crowds and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I would uh, rather not interfere with those individuals. And he just walks into the, into the bar. She kind of turns around and she walks into Question, Bolt, before we head inside. I mm-hmm. don't know your individual ilk that well. I just met you, of course. How trusting are you all? Uh, trusting of people, like newcomers? Yes. Uh, I think generally we're pretty trusting. I, I, I mean, we welcomed you pretty readily, didn't we? Don't take this as a lesson in uh, integrity and honesty, but if you, if I am to continue traveling with you, I will figure out each and every individual who comes to talk to you. There's always a motive. Hmm. That's probably prudent then, yes. Um. I just don't want you to be afraid when it seems like I'm doing something that's unperceivable. Hmm. As y'all stands at the door in the, in the mud hole, she says, come on now. And then she goes. And I will like time. flourish and like flourish to a uh, bolt, like saying after yeah. you. <laughs> well, I guess we can get armor later. And I <laughs> begrudgingly go back into <laughs> back inside. Okay. And as and you I'll all, after. yeah, as you all come inside the mud hole tavern, you still hear the snoring of um, of the gentleman in the back table who is passed out on the table, um, and you also hear as Plunk is completely passed out and sleeping <laughs> on the table where Syrah uh, sits. Yanil, I can't remember, did she follow or did she stay nope, she stayed. stayed. She stayed to take care of them and make sure yeah. a bit of a chaperone yep. of sorts. Um, in this time that they've gone out and spoken, Syrah, have you had more? And Snow, have you had more? I have not in that okay. time. I, I have been boisterously laughing Okay. And recounting tales of how me and Plunk pretended to be married <laughs> and newlyweds. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, so as you come in, um, I would say that you're still telling that story. You're kind of in the middle of it. Um, mm-hmm. Snow, did you have any more? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, that is four now. <laughs> Sorry? That is, that is four? At least four. Okay. At least can four. I, can I have another constitution check, please? <laughs> yes, uh, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, really Snow Seven. is on a mission. Seven. 
A seven. Well, at this point, Snow is taking a lot more interest in the story um, than it appears maybe he should, as Sira is basically laughing and blubbering through most of it, um, fairly incoherently. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that look like, um, Sira and Snow? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Can you imagine? Can you? Can you imagine? <laughs> this is me and like Plug and like Plug is much smaller than I am. <laughs> We're supposed to be married <laughs> and on a honeymoon. <laughs> That's what it looks like. And you know, as you walk in, she kind of looks over at the table and then she looks over at the two of them, or the three of them, with punk. <laughs> <laughs> and just like totally I think that's up. what he said to the guards you know immediately gets up and the first person to come through the door is you uh, and she kind of ignores you as you, but you came through fairly abruptly and then watches as Gaziel comes back through and uh, kind of calls Gaziel over or motions for her and, and she's like I don't know what to do with them um they're acting quite um, inebriated, and I thought we had a plan. Um, I don't know what You're to do. You're inebriated. <laughs> At this point, um, Yanil reaches out and puts her head, like, like, basically, like, smacks you on the forehead, and she cla uh, casts Lesser Restoration and removes the condition, and you're immediately. <laughs> I just Sober. picture her saying, should have had a V8. Wow, <laughs> 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 oh, what the heck, you know? We all need to focus. We don't need to hit each time. other. We are all friends here. Yeah, I, I love you guys so much. You're good people. Wow. All right. He's drunk. <laughs> well, what's that? <laughs> He's trying to shame him. <laughs> oh. Totally forgetting that I was in yeah. the state I was in. Yeah. All right, well, what is the plan? Um, we have things we need to do, and then we need to move on. So I, I at this walk, point, I, I walk in and like at I, this I sit, point, at this point, Zin and and Bolt walk in. I walk in and sit at, at, at a table that's like separate from from them, yeah. and just sort of like start pulling out the chairs to get like it, get it ready. And yeah. Start pulling other chairs over to this new table, and yeah. then realize that they're all going to a yeah. different table. Yeah. <laughs> and then start moving everything back yeah. and coming to meet up with them. Okay. <laughs> And then you know, kind of looks up at you, and and she kind of smiles awkwardly and and. So, sorry, I thought um, we were going to sit, and then there's more of you and. Hello, I'm Gregory. Gregory, what is that? Hello, Gregory. And just points at Plunk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know these performers. <laughs> right. Um. Shall we discuss um, wolves and oh, things? My apologies. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, who are you? Uh, Hello, I'm I'm Gregory. I was uh, eavesdropping, and then your little friend here uh, noticed me eavesdropping and called me out on it, and now we're here having a conversation. She gives you, she shoots you a glance when you say little. I um, your lovely, holy, um, very strong, holy person here. Ah, he's not saving himself. Mm. Uh, we were going to look for horses and or armor, and we happened upon a caravan of injured individuals that seemed okay. to have been some wolves attacking within the Searing Green Forest. Uh, not where we were, a little more to the west. Yes, precisely. Uh, that is precisely what I wanted to talk about. There's wolves in this area? Well, wow. there's wolves in every area, but this seems more concentrated. Yes, it is um, unique to this particular area, and uh, I was hoping to try to find out more. And one person is a lot less than uh, one, two, three. F Do we count the one that's snoring? Yes. Yes, of course. Four, five, uh, six. The six? So seven of us would be great. Wait, wait. The math checks out. One is less than seven. Okay. <laughs> I like this one. Well, the issue is our, well, their 
current mission isn't going back into the forest. It's getting some things so they can go to Komoda, potentially past that. I do not want to speak for the group, but it did seem like there was individuals needing assistance. Well, yes, there's, there's, there's many of them. We, we, we could, you're all <laughs> very capable. I mean, you look very capable. We, could, we, we are could so capable. We are. Should, should I count six instead of seven? Uh, well, I, normally he is very capable, but this, I, I think he's looking at all the empty cups. I I'm, mean, I'm, I'm just. He's, he's still all, capable. He's still capable. And super duper well, capable. Then seven people would be fantastic. We just, I just need a little bit of help to find out what's going on and why these wolves are, are, are just leaving attacks and people unscathed after the after the fact. Why? 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 How, how do you know we're not already doing something? Uh, we are kind of already doing something. We're drinking. Well, are you not good people? I mean, no, he, uh, we were drinking. Um, it, it, does, it does make one curious why the wolves just bit and ran. It's a, it's a plague on this town. I mean, we should try to help them. Mm. Find out what's going I, on. I've... You are assuming that folks have the time to do such a thing. Well, I'm not saying it doesn't mean it's good. I'm saying you can't expect folks to jump off just because you said please. Sorry, Sierra, you were saying? Oh, no, 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 totally valid what you were saying, but hear me out. Um, we've got a little, uh, we, we've got some un, unwanted fan art out there of us, out on, posted up on, on, on streets of, of towns. And, and listen, if we, if we start helping people and, and with their problems, perhaps then they wouldn't find us so unsavory and perhaps maybe they wouldn't want us to be so wanted as we are, if that makes sense. So you're saying we would be so wanted smart. in a good way? Yeah, if we, start, if we help people, Maybe they'll be like, oh, I saw that poster of people and they're not that bad because they helped me with my thing. Like they helped me with bring my goats back into their farm and werewolves and whatever. But we, we don't have any beef with them because they helped us. Maybe that's, maybe that'll work in our favor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Our public image is, is very suffering. It is. What did you do? Well. Uh, just no, I'm curious to know this myself. <laughs> uh, well, I wasn't was there. Oh, so you weren't just with them when you did all the things that made you unwanted. I wasn't. No. So it's they just wasn't either. the sleeping one, this one, and the, 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 the holy person. Yes. She shakes her, Gazia shakes her head. We, we were very um, adventurous. On the, on the menagerie coast. Adventure is very good. Yes. See? <laughs> Nothing bad about this that. This is an adventure that we're going to go on. Yes. Together. Well, then. Right, you're going to come? Yes. That settles it. <laughs> yes. It's like, at, at what point does protecting yourself from not wanting to be dead becomes being a bad person? There's a very, there's a whole lot of gray area in between. Well, mm -hmm. I'm not saying you're bad people. I'm just saying you seem like good people and you could help other good people in the town who are just being attacked by wolves. Yes. For who knows why. Exactly. Does this get us any closer to our destination, Yanil says? Because I know, I understand oh. Yanil sounds a lot like as I mean, the Siren Queen <laughs> goes pretty north, I guess. Um, it, could, it could, if you're going that way. I mean, it also goes south. It goes a little hmm. bit, a, a little bit east-west, suggest... but not as much. I think you just said every uh, direction. I did, yes. I didn't really think that answer through. It's there are a need, there is a need to get horses here. We can get the horses, we can head towards the Searing Green Forest, we can figure out what's going on with these wolves. Once we figure that out, then we can continue going north towards the Bronken Hills to Komoda. That's the destination, that's the pathway. Hmm. Makes the most sense, but again, I do not speak for the group. Makes sense to me. If we can improve yeah. our public image and get some horses and go there quickly, yeah, we can get, get it all horses. done yes. in an afternoon. Snow. <laughs> and I like tap snow. <laughs> oh. Back. Snow, we should get some horses. We should get some horses. We should 
we we should get some horses. Out of curiosity, though, when I look at Gregory, I see your accessories. What can you do? Uh, well, uh, I can use the accessories that you see, basically. Um, it's, uh, I know it's a very rare weapon, but I've learned how to use these, uh, these this, this pepper box. I mean, I pull out the pepper box. Um, and I've also, you know, I can use a sword if I need to. I prefer not to, but I can use it. Noted. And at this point, um, most of you have not seen the device that he pulls out. And it looks quite um, different. Um, I don't know if you, any of you have seen... You might have I seen like it to in, cook with pepper. In, it adds a decent amount of spice. <clears throat> I will let you decide if I have, based uh, on stuff. Yeah. Um, yes, I would imagine you would have knowledge of it. Um, Snow, you would have knowledge of it. Sierra, you would not, having come from Marquette, probably. I'm having knowledge of what? Of the, of, of the device that he pulls out. And it looks like a pistol, basically. Gotcha. Um, oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, I have no idea what that is. Yeah. Um, and Bolt, mm. I imagine that you probably would, actually, being kind of the in ingenuitive type. Mm -hmm. um, you would probably have an understanding, maybe never have seen one firsthand, um, but mm. you've heard stories, absolutely, of something called a firearm. Mm. And it's quite intriguing, I imagine, for you. Um, may I? No. Well, I was, I'm, I'm going to shoot yeah, it. Uh, um, it going... took quite a bit of work to create this, and I'm uh, rather mm -hmm. protective of it. Uh? So if you don't mind, uh, you can look at it from afar, but mm. that's about as close as you're going to get to it. That's very impressive. And I'm just going to sort of slowly send a mage hand claw <laughs> to see how far... Could you stop doing that? Uh, okay. Thank All right. you. I'm just looking at the fire. Stow it back away. Yeah. And, and it looks like basically the, the, the hilt of a pistol with like six barrels on the end of it. Um, smaller holes on the end of it. Yep. Hmm. Well, it seems we have a potential... Um, itinerary, if it will. So, if we want to go get the horses, and then we can head towards the Searing Green Forest again. How, how long? And you know, speaks up. How long um, do we plan to stay here? I would assume just until we get the horses. And it seems Bolt wish to get armor. Just if they have something that would be an upgrade, but we still haven't checked so, yet. I would say no more than another hour or so. So, um, would you like me to stay here? And I can watch <laughs> Plunk. Yes, I suppose someone has to make sure he doesn't fall off his chair. Yes, yes. Are you, are you okay if you stay here by yourself with him? Um, perhaps. Um, so the plan is to get mounts. Yes. Beasts of burden. Um, how many? Um, and can we afford such things? I don't know how much gold we all have. Uh, I, I don't know how... I still need you to give me a number for me. <laughs> I go I for it. <laughs> yes. But I, I would I'm also sure I have. need to know how much gold I maybe have on me. Yes. Didn't actually talk about that. Um, yeah, I totally forgot. Yeah, I, no, I, I have mine. I just need to know how much these horses go for. Yeah. Um, I would say that um, you, Zin, and Gregory would probably about have, probably have like 100 gold in whatever denominations you want to break that into. Okay. Spending, okay. spending money. Um, Snow, you probably have close to that. I've got about 81. Yeah, yeah. I think Gaziel has close to that as well. I have 127. Yeah. So. Ooh, look at you. And then I don't know. I thought you had party gold. Somebody had party gold. Oh. I yeah I well we, yeah I have. Weren't you keeping I, I party got, treasure? Yeah. Snow. Party gold uh, is the funny, um, the funnest I gold. I don't think so. Okay. We just got gold last episode. Okay. Yeah. Um, I had zero gold. I don't have party gold. I think we already dispersed it, Snow. Yeah, Probably. some was dispersed. I think I think we dispersed. Two gold and something silver a piece. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I think I had that added to mine already. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, Gaziel says, I, I don't know how much they're going to cost. Um, does anyone know how much mounts would be? Uh, Do I know how much mounts are here? Is like a history I don't, I, yeah, I history don't know. Checks. I don't I, Yeah. I don't yeah. use mounts, so I don't really know. <laughs> yeah. With a 20. I don't think uh, Sira would have history. have ever bought anything for herself, so yeah, no. no. I imagine not. <laughs> yeah. Snow so spends a... most of his time <clears throat> in the ocean, so. Yeah, so you would have a rough idea. Uh, you would have a better idea. What was your history check, Zen? <laughs> Nine. Okay. So you have... You don't have much of an idea. Um, you have never bought a mount. Um <laughs> For yourself, uh, you yeah. People bought them for me, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, but for you, you know that they range anywhere um, for like a beast of burden, like a mule or a donkey, around eight to ten gold or so. Um, when you get into like draft horses and riding horses, in the fifty to seventy-five gold range, and then for something like a war horse is, is quite expensive if it's trained. But for for riding, you could probably get something between fifty and a hundred gold in most places, depending on the current financial status of that. Of that well, area. if we're looking to buy our own horses, it'll be, you know, fifty gold if we can haggle. Um, but uh, I mean, I imagine if we could possibly rent them or borrow them. Uh, and return them when we're done, but that would mean you have to come back here after. Or we could possibly just sell them off in the new place that we're at. If you want to buy them, mm -hmm. if you want to rent them, I was saying you'd have to return them, but okay. I don't know how much gold you all have. Uh, I would have enough to rent one for myself, okay. but I think that would be it. Yes, well, um... And Gaziel speaks up, and she says, "We can also share, and ride together. I, I need something smaller, um, which hopefully is half the price. I can get myself a horse. I don't. I mean, right. I'd be willing it, it to." It sounds like I think we each can possibly mm -hmm. afford our own our own horse mount. Maybe Gaziel and Plunk could ride with someone. And then ah. we wouldn't have to. We could double up I on it. Guess. And she kind of like <laughs> doesn't look excited about that situation, but. I would need somebody to, uh, you know, point the horse in the right direction. Perhaps I could ride on the back of somebody else's horse as well. Yes. That is probably a great idea. Yes. Um, and then you know, says, um, I'm um, on the heftier side. Um, I don't know if a beast of burden would be able to carry one of my size. Um, we could possibly just uh, rent a like a like a wagon then, maybe a, just a couple uh, horses in a wagon instead, mm. and just get ourselves. Yes. Mm. Well, all together. Should we stay here? And she kind of looks at the place and like again the smell of like this nastiness. It's like, um, do I need to stay he here? I mean, I did spend the last four hundred years in a cage. Um, so anywhere is better than that. You're how old? Um, yes. Um, That's uh, rude. Don't ask for that. I. Mm. <laughs> um, Holy gee, look at you, chair. <laughs> um, and uh, and then she says, um, but I can take Plunk wherever, perhaps. I, I don't mind staying here. I, I just don't know if it's the safest place for us. I kind of like lift Plunk's arm up and watch it like slap back down. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> maybe we should one point of bludgeoning damage. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe do we stay here for the night? We there is another place that we can go. We can get it. I don't mm, ha, mm, ha. If we all just go get the horses, we can be on our way, potentially get the wagon and go. I don't I see like why it. we need to stay another day. I I know I come off as very authoritative, and I do not mean to. I just feel like there are variables being tossed no, up. No, no, it's, it's the solution it's authoritative is quite way. simple. It's if we can get a wagon, they could sleep in the wagon. They could sleep in the wagon. That's true. Then let's go get a wagon. All right. All right. Am I staying? If they have one available, or are we bringing? Come with, with us. us. Come with um, us. Would you be able to? Help him along if we did. She, she she grabs Plunk almost like effortlessly by the by like the back of the belt, and like throws him on her shell. 
huh. on the back with like almost like you know when, you, when someone's carrying a calf or like a like a like a, like, a, like a pig over their shoulders and like he just like slumped over and she's like let's go and he kind of just sits on and she just lets her arms down he just sits on the back of her shell draped across it hmm. shall we all right Lead all right the way. Gaziel says uh zin went where to uh, he will literally just start to walk out the door and start walking. <clears throat> okay. All right. All right, Zin, where would you like to go? Um, there are a variety of, I know we're getting horses. Is there anything else you guys mm-hmm. want to get? Where do you want to go first? So if I'm looking at that correctly, and I know I have it, we have a different picture that I can look at that's a little more high res. Uh, here it is. So, uh, um, you do. No, no, you edited it. Never mind. Um... Okay, well, so you said that's like a, yeah. So the stables are um, yeah. north on the road that cuts through the lock ward, mm-hmm. um, basically where the north road meets that central road, uh, right there, kind of center <clears throat> screen is the stables. Um, we want to go to the stables, and then I believe we want to go over down the north road to the west towards the market area. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, because that will be where some of the armor and stuff would potentially be like, a, you know, in that area. Though there is the blacksmith that's up the street. Potentially we can go to the blacksmith and yeah. then go to the stables. Yeah, you could do that. You go to the blacksmith and the Yeah, let's the go to the stables, blacksmith to the way, to, the, to the east and then and go back up to the stables. Yep. Ooh. Okay. Sounds I'll be right. quick, I promise. Okay. So for the sake of brevity, we won't role play the whole interaction. We love brevity. Um, let's, uh, especially when it comes to the blacksmith and the stables, we can just figure that out. Um, you enter the blacksmith. It's a it's a small kind of humble building. Um, you imagine there's a number of different blacksmiths, and as you know, Zin, there are in this area. Um, this is just mm-hmm. the one that you know is kind of the most affordable and has been the most pleasant to kind of deal with um, when in Trust and Wald previously. Um, what are you looking to purchase? Anyone? Ah, yes, good sir. Uh, looking for some armor. Hopefully something a bit more sturdy than this. And I show him <laughs> yeah. what I'm wearing so far. Yeah. Okay. Um, and he starts to kind of like pull a bunch of options. Um, and pretty much anything you imagine that would be available. Um, all very rudimentary. So nothing super fancy in this area. Uh, and Zin, as you had mentioned before, you know now that a lot of the, uh, the like the the gilded things and the things that were a lot more fancy would be found kind of in the in the hill ward. in the hill ward, yeah. Um, kind of all the boutique kind of places and almost like cost more costumey than than this. This is much more practical. Um, but yep. Pretty much any type of armor that you would need, you can find on the wall displayed in this in this. Mm. Do I see any shop. plate? Um, you see one suit of plate. Um, how much is this on sale for? Yeah, he tells you it is fifteen hundred gold. <laughs> Goodness. Um, how much is it if we rid the forest of wolves? <laughs> <laughs> it stares right. blankly in your direction. Ah. Uh, all right. Well, like I can't see anything to see. Uh, shall we go to the stables? <laughs> <laughs> Your time at the blacksmith ends quickly as you all head north um, along the lock road. Unless anybody else I wants love that there was the, there was very, very little attempt to barter. That was nothing. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You had you had what north can I get uh, for five gold. <laughs> You head northeast along uh, the Lock Road, uh, and then you head south um, uh, on, uh, sorry, not south, sorry, west, along the kind of the, the road that meets the hill, uh, the north road, passing a number of different little shops here and there uh, until you come to the stables, stables, which is kind of at the apex of two different roads um, and where they meet. Um, again, we'll... We don't have to necessarily role play the stables. We can just talk about what you all want. And as you enter, you do see that, again, another humble stable. Um, and they have some livestock. So uh, a couple cows, some sheep, some goats. Um, but mostly riding horses, a couple draft horses, some mules, some ponies. Um, and uh, But nothing that you imagine would be incredibly trained very well. All of it is meant for travel for the most part in this place. Um... 
does it uh he would ask and we don't have to go through it completely but he would ask if there was a place if he or this you know a tavern tavern stable master i don't want to assume the gender um um has or knows of where to get a a wagon Four horses, mm. so we don't have to buy all the horses. We can buy yeah. a wagon and maybe two yeah, horses. Two horses, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So um, they say that you can buy a wagon here, um, and it will cost 35 gold for a wagon. That's it? Okay. <laughs> Sold. Soldiana. Yeah. yeah. And again, it's not a carriage. It's a wagon. So it's a it's, wagon. Yeah. That's cool. So, yeah. you know, basically wood, rudimentary kind of wood. Um, with the the, t- the harnessing that is necessary for big wood wheels, it's a wagon. Yeah. Okay. okay. I uh, kick the wheels to make sure that they're on there firmly. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's, it's it's rudimentary but well built. This is good. It's uh, it sounds very wooden. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now get in. I hate. <laughs> Sounds very wooden. <laughs> um, we would want a draft horse for pulling the wagon, or we want a riding horse. Uh, you would want a probably well, a draft horse would be uh, less expensive. Um, but I mean, but, like technically, but, like draft horses are for pulling wagons, but riding horses are for being on your own. Yeah, so, I guess a, a riding horse can do that. But I was thinking, yeah. If you're going to lead uh, a horse that pulls a wagon, you'd use a draft horse. If you were to ride a horse that's pulling a wagon, well, no, uh, you would sit in the wagon. Yeah, yeah. You'd sit in the wagon, and you'd have draft horses that, that pull it. Yeah. So you don't necessarily yeah. need a riding horse. Yep. All right. Uh, whatever and, horses we get, I would like a moment to speak with these horses. Okay. <laughs> this should be fun. All right. Um, and you walk in, and there are a number of different horses. Um, I'd say probably like a dozen at least, of all varying shapes. I don't want to say shapes. They're all the same shape. All varying colors <laughs> and breeds. Uh, what specifically are you looking for? Looking for one that's, like, able and willing <laughs> okay. to pull a wagon. Okay. All right. Like, if we see one that's like, oh, my God, please don't make me do this. Like, that's not <laughs> one I yeah. want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, and as you look over, I mean, they all have varying dispositions. Um, one of them is kind of like prancing in place when it sees you. And as you kind of come close, it kind of like lifts his head. And I, you and, speak and with animals. Hey, hey, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hey, remember last time you 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 voiced you an made animal. Me, you I made know. me be a I rabbit, right. and you made me all be right, drunk. Right, right. So I'm going <laughs> to make says, you be a horse. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was the face the you made time. before <laughs> even making the a noise. The last time Jay voiced an animal, that animal became a main cast member. <laughs> 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 he says, Jay, she hasn't introduced my main character yet. I know. He says, well, hello there. Are you up for adventure? <laughs> What's that? Uh, do you have the desire to run as fast as you can run and be free, but also help me and my friends because we'll help you. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, if you want to get out of here, you don't want to just be cooped up in this, in this state. And he starts to, like, prounce. As you're watching, she's speaking. What does your horse voice sound like? Seriously. My horse voice sounds very similar to that. I'm just like... <laughs> and I'm just, just like making like those, and 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 like you can see Sierra is like kind of doing this like kind of like trotting, yeah, like in her own way, like just kind of uh, mirroring the 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 motions that this other horse is like. Yeah, yeah, we're buddy. Let's do this. Are you up for adventure? I'm up for adventure. I'm gonna treat you really well. I have that. Like I promise you that uh, if you want to come along with us, because I, I don't want to take, I, I, I don't want to take anyone on an adventure that doesn't want to go. Persuasion check. But you, okay. <laughs> you look like you want to go. Yeah. And we'll be very nice to you. Yeah. I promise. Uh, persuasion, 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 persuasion. Yes! That's a high one for me. That's a 16. Yep. Not, not, a, not a very high dice roll. But decent. But a good. Okay. 
Okay. He says, oh, no, no, food? <laughs> and water. I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> What's your favorite snack? Apples. Like apples? <laughs> like carrots? What apples. is it, buddy? Apples? <laughs> I'll get you some apples. I promise I'll get you some apples. <laughs> you have my word. And she kind of like brings her hand over to shake. Yeah. And then like kind yeah. of like hesitates like his no. hoof. <laughs> And he raises his hoof, and you watch as her and this draft horse shake hooves. And I turn around, I'm like, we'll take this horse. <laughs> okay. And so, and this one is, we'll, we'll say it's kind of a brown hide horse. It's got black kind of mane that kind of hangs off the side. Um, very rudimentary draft horse, hey. strong, well built. What's, uh, what, what, what's your name? Horse. Your name's Horse. Well, that's easy to remember. Cool. Uh, I'm, I'm Sierra. These are my friends. I'll like very, for the sake of everybody, introduce everybody. Uh, we're gonna have some fun together. I promise. <laughs> All right. It's almost Scooby Doo. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be Scooby Doo. <laughs> The next dog voice, just wait. All right. Um, all right. So, um, like I said, that draft horse is going to set you back um, 50 gold. I'll, I'll buy the horse. Okay. You buy the draft horse, and the wagon is going to cost uh, 35. I can buy the wagon. Oh. Um, I was muted this entire time. Do we only want one horse? How many is it a two horse wagon or is it? So I, I would character? say you could you could seat four sitting up in the wagon, just sitting, um, two lying down, um, but you have gear as well. So if you don't get horses or another draft horse to carry your gear, your gear you're gonna have to go in the wagon. So it's just a matter. What if of one of us was on the horse while the rest of the people were in the wagon? Um, you get the sense, as mentioned, that this horse isn't really for riding. It's for pulling, gotcha. and so probably okay. wouldn't. It's not trained for riding. So should we get two? Hmm. I was thinking two horses and a wagon. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I, can, I, I, Zen will will uh, go into his bag and flip up a couple of coins and catch him and goes as a thank you for allowing me to explore. I will buy the second horse. Okay. You're a good dude. You're so good. I like you, Zin. I like you a lot. I oh. like you too, Snow. So you're buying like a you. second draft horse? Second draft horse. And that is for carrying gear or whatever? Yeah. Mm. Okay. And so Sarah in, in Speak With Animals goes to Ron, which one of you other horses wants to come with us? And this other horse. <laughs> <Nick>. <laughs> 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 they all like start to, some of them are like, <laughs> Rough and like really not happy. I don't know why it roughed, but anyways, <laughs> <Scooby -Doo. laughs> yeah, it, it starts like 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 stamping the and and you know yeah you, you're getting a variety of different answers, uh, but there is kind of a Palomino that is kind of looks up and looks at his buddy, who now you're taking and is like take me too, take me too. Heck yes, you ready? Let's go. <laughs> I'm ready. Your adventure, do you like apples? I promise this guy apples. I'll get you some apples. Carrots. Carrots. We got apples. We got carrots. We got a wagon. We're doing this. All right. We ready? <laughs> and I'm like doing like a horse, like whatever the yeah. horse equivalent yeah. of like a heck yes. Like it rears up adventure. like this. <laughs> well, I guess that means Palomy yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the group, Gregory. Oh, oh, oh. Gaziel, you hear her from the other side of the of the stable kind of yard. Um, she's beside a, a really nice white horse. Um, and she says, um, uh, sorry, pony, um, which is about half the size. She says, um, I'll take this one. And she is going to purchase, it's a riding horse, so she can ride it on her own. Anything else? So let's just do a count of who can go on what and make sure that we have enough. I guess she's not riding with Plunk then. Uh, no. <laughs> she made the decision. Well, especially if, if especially if Snow rides with Gaziel or if he rides in, in the thing, um, that settles that. There's four, there's four spots in the wagon plus the actual driver of the wagon, so that's five for the wagon. Mm. Gregory, you on your own. You got to figure yourself out. We don't know you. <laughs> that, that's fair. I can um, 
Uh, <laughs> I did not. I, just, I would have uh, said that in character a different way, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, are we going to do the um, the two draft horses on the one wagon, or should I just buy us a second wagon? Well, you you are. Uh, this will sound very weird and probably rude, but we just met you. Well, they just met me too, but after this mission, you are on your own. So if you want to buy a wagon, you can buy a wagon for yourself. Um, okay. Uh, could I use your draft horse on my wagon if I buy the wagon? When we're, when we're done? Well, n- no, I just mean now. Oh, now? You're buying two draft horses for one wagon? If I get a second That's... wagon, we'll have two wagons, and then there's lots of space. We'll just if to... that works... Will the will the wagon be pulled by one? Uh, yeah, it, I guess I'll, I guess I always picture wagons being pulled by two. That's why I was like I can, but I don't, didn't see that being a thing. Yeah, I mean typically, yeah, typically they're pulled by two. Uh, the oh. size of wagon that you want to fit four people in, and like somebody piloting it, would be would be pulled by two. Then yeah. I'll just uh, or, buy or a smaller one. wagon. If you had a smaller, you can have a smaller wagon that's pulled by one. I'll just buy myself a bigger. horse then. Okay. Um, Stable hand. Um, I, I would like your most mediocre horse that you have. Okay. And you're just looking for a riding horse. Yes. Okay. <laughs> nothing <laughs> too fancy. Horse. Nothing and nothing too too frail. Just okay. right in the yep. middle. And uh, they tell you it's seventy five. You could do a little better than seventy five, but mediocre. Uh, persuasion. That's a fifteen. Okay. Uh, huh, huh, with a fifteen. Uh, you managed to hag. Uh, what's your counter offer? A fifty for mediocre. I mean, obviously this is horse. Look at the, it's so mediocre. And, and it's got like patches of fur missing, kind of in in, in places. It, and the horse and, like, looks flies like my are pants. kind of like uh, sixty. Fine. No less. Fine. Sixty it is. Yeah. <laughs> I am going to put the wagon out. Okay, so you're you got a two horse wagon. Very nice. Yep, two horse wagon, and then Gregory got his own horse, and Gazio got her own horse. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's just make sure that everybody's accounted for. Two horse wagon. Oh yeah. With um, uh-huh. actually, we can probably bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got a two horse wagon. Oh, look at that! And Can so, who is going to go in the wagon? So, I mean, imagine you know. You know, p- yeah. Plunk, I feel like I would pilot snow. this wagon because I could speak with the horses you and know. just be like, "Make a left." Plunk. Oh, there's only two people fit in that wagon. Um, Yanil's quite large. Uh, um, okay, so but we can fit two people kind of on the front two sitting. So we'll say if Sira goes here, and uh, somebody smaller can kind of go. So yeah, um, Gaziel will be on her own. Zin, what are you writing? Uh, sorry, one second. Um, if I would be in the wagon, yep. a plunk could, ne- could technically be next to Sierra in the front, if necessary. Yep. Um, uh, Bolt, I will assume Bolt's in the wagon. Um, if Well, Snow would have to go in the wagon, and then Zin. So well, no, if, if Gazio has a riding horse... Snow could technically ride with Gazio. It's a pony. Oh, it's a pony? Never mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to pile everybody up this wagon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I miscalculated uh, how big this wagon is. So I think we're good, right? Because then Bolt we, can we, also we go should the back be of the fine. wagon. Wow. Yeah, and then for now, <laughs> Gregory did buy... No, no, he bought a house. Never mind. Uh, so yeah, we should be fine. We should be good. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, uh, this wagon, though full, again, like, basically at this point, though, you don't have anything, you know, you can't really, you gotta, I don't know where you're gonna put your things. Your packs can kind of stay on your back at this point. We can. Because all you have is your packs. Can, bu- can we buy a saddlebag for one of the horses so we can uh, put some stuff on with them? Yeah, yeah, you can put some things, yeah, you can buy some saddlebags. Uh, they are, yeah. sorry, sorry. The proverbial... Clown wagon. Yeah. yeah, exactly, right? Um, saddlebags are four gold. Yeah, that's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, will, I, will, I will buy the two saddlebags. Okay. Um, all right, so you have 
Yeah, so you have two saddlebags, um, two sets of saddlebags, so that's eight gold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I guess for both of the draft horses, so yeah. we can guess if we need stuff to not be on yeah. the wagon, we can just put it on the horses. Yeah. Um, and I would say, again, like, if you're sitting in this wagon, basically you're sitting on the edge of it with your feet inside it um, because, yeah. again, it's just it's cramped. It's just you're basically being pulled. You're not going to be able to sleep unless there's only two people in there uh, to get an actual benefit of sleep. Um, you can do short rests in the wagon uh, as you're kind of going along because you're not actively walking or doing anything active um, while you're being pulled in the wagon. We'll allow that. Um... Okay, that's everyone. That is everyone, right? Yeah. No, that's not you. Oh, um, great. Uh, I, I you bought, bought a, a riding horse, a so riding you bought your horse. own riding horse. Okay. All right, and we will just make you this person for now. Hooray. Until we have a mini. Okay, all right. Um, you're finished at the stables. Anything else you need at the stables? Oh, you're no. going to need... Um, are you going to need anything else? Uh, we need feed or anything like that? Yeah, so we, feed we per day... We need carrots and apples. <laughs> yeah, so feed <laughs> per day is five copper. Um, okay. So it depends on how many days you need. Um, as mentioned, it's about a three, four day ride about, back to yeah. the forest. Um, so you'll need yeah. enough to get there and then to wherever else you think you need, you, you know, however much you need to get to the location that you are going to. Um, I'll buy the feed for the, for the horses. Yeah. I mean, you ima- you probably, before you get to, because yeah, if you're heading north, that's going to be almost, I'd get at least... 10, a 10 things of um, ten feed days? for each. Yeah. 10 days of feed for each horse. Because that's, that's at least three or four getting to the forest. Um, we can scavenge in the forest as necessary for stuff, but then going up from there would yeah. need... Okay. Yeah. What's that total? Because I forgot how much it was for You each. said five copper, so five copper, copper per day. Hmm. So ten copper per day. Okay. Unless horses eat... So a hundred copper. Yeah. That's okay. one silver? <laughs> That's one... Yeah, how much is that in silver? That's uh, one silver, I think. No, a ten copper is... Ten copper, ten copper is, one is one silver. Ten copper is one silver. Yeah. Ten, ten copper is one silver, so, so ten silver would yeah. be a hundred copper. Ten yeah. silver, okay. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Okay, got it. Um, so, uh, yeah. And then uh, you don't need a bit. Oh, you would need a bit and bridle, which is two gold, and so would Gaziel. Okay. And plunk. I'm just writing out where people are in the thing. Greg, horse. Greg. It's always the add ons that get you on. Uh, mm. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm assuming you don't want barding Bags, for your things. horse. Cyrus, you don't want barding? What's armor? Nah, I'm not going to spend that. Okay. I'm not that fancy. And aside from aside from feed, um, Zira, I mean, we're next to the market. Oh, and a saddle. Get... <laughs> Sorry, you also need a saddle, which is another uh, 10 gold. I need a saddle? No. Uh, there's uh, a riding saddle, pack saddle, military saddle, or an exotic saddle. Hmm. Um, well, let's go for the pack saddle. Well, pack saddle would be if for, it's, draft for a draft horse to carry stuff. So you would need a. Well, how much for the riding saddle then? Ten gold. Another ten. Gaziel says saying, things are getting tight financially. <laughs> now, this is what happens, but this is the investment part. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Um, with the feed, we got ten. We got ten days of feed, but you mm-hmm. want to also get some apples and carrots, just specifically for your. So they guys are happier yeah. yeah yeah but then after that i think that's all we need i think we're good <sighs> taking notes y'all oh, wow. i like it okay is it true that a horse loses half its value once it leaves the lot <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so you all have everything you need you took saddles off um Okay. Okay. All right. With your new wagon and your horses, you trot out of the stables, significantly less wealthy, mm. and you head west mm-hmm. down the road, uh, down the north road. Uh, where to next? Don't say it like that. What, what we I still say? wealth. Just wealth has we been changed in- to another form. <laughs> 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 yeah. We're... They have a resale value. Significantly yeah. less liquid. Let's say. Yes. Mm. Yes. There exactly. you go. Uh, I, and I as believe we are. Yeah, sorry. And as you uh, as you kind of pull out of the stable, you start heading uh, southwest down the north road. 
Uh, you do notice uh, on the right, uh, mm. uh, directly to the right of the road, you see the North Ward, um, which is more of the industry uh, and industrial area of Trostenwald. In the distance, you see uh, two of the large breweries sort of looming above that industrial space um, with one in the further direction. And um, and uh, fields of grain, uh, you assume, for the breweries past that. As you kind of head southwest towards the market circle and then the market street. And that is where we're going to take a break. Uh, and we will be right back. Sorry about the mics. Welcome to Dwarven Forge. This is everything you need to know about our terrain in 60 seconds. Ready? Let's go. We hand sculpt our pieces for maximum detail and artistry, infusing passion into every millimeter of our work. Everything is available beautifully hand painted so you can start playing right away. Or you can choose unpainted to paint everything yourself. Our pieces are completely modular so you can use the same sets to create a new adventure every time. Most pieces have embedded anchor magnets that affix to our terrain trays for secure building and for revealing rooms as your players discover them. We create everything out of Dwarvenite, our top secret PVC formula that's nearly indestructible. We pack our pieces with as many features as possible, such as swappable LEDs to quickly change the look of your scene. We offer magnetic accessories to add flavor or increase the danger. A one-inch tactical grid is sculpted into our floors, hidden in dungeon flagstones, natural rocks, or sticks and plants. In addition to sculpted pieces, we make terrain trays to use as a vibrant graphic base for your build. We offer a range of environments, including dungeons, caverns, cities, castles, sewers, forests, mountains, streets, burrows, ice, and hellscape. And that's just the beginning. We have a passionate fan base who can tell you all about it. And that's everything you need to know about Dwarven Forge in 60 seconds. The games we play are the stories we create. The fortress doors swing open. Every story is unique. And the sound of war drums rises. Sometimes our stories come to us when we least expect them. We need to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Sirenscape can help make yours epic. Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has never been easier.
you miss playing Dungeons and Dragons or just have a hard time finding a group in your hometown? Maybe you just wish you could play more. On Discord, we created a community of over 100 people who are playing D&D around the clock. I'm Noggins. Oh, see. CC. Piotr Strongshield. Katarina. Elder Stevie Varbaba Negra. Tayel. Daria. Kostash Morach. El Ross. Falfur Softfoot. Nikita Swartz Fine. Best Boy Reindeer. Misery Cordelia. Jordani Goril. Body Kostasnik. Bregor Iron Pony. Tom. Nabuti. Dimitri. Shalara. Barf Battle Brain. I'm Atomic Scray, mate. Shortly Frudari. Warren Greenstab. Melina Lee. Sesh Morses. Malachi Dupraki. Sarah Sklar Life Forger. Travas. Tamazar. Esmeralda Amber Shake. Elder Waddleby. Dustin Morses. A Morgan Reagan. Maxa Kitty. Sterling. By integrating Discord and DD Beyond, we're able to provide an immersive experience that is the first of its kind. You can create a character from 1st to 15th level and then roleplay 24-7 in our Discord channels while combating monsters, crafting weapons, training new skills, and searching for items across our campaign world. You'll also have the chance to participate in random combat encounters and go on monthly virtual quests. Ever wanted to try your hand at being a dungeon master? Or maybe you're an experienced dungeon master and just want the chance to run more adventures. As a community DM, you can run encounters and virtual quests for the community based on monthly modules written by our very own accomplished plot team. Join us. Join us. Check it out. Join the Discord. Join us. Join us. And let's create incredible stories together.
And we're back. All right. Is there Should be. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. All right. Um, you are heading northwest on the road um, into the market area. Um, as you head northwest, um, you see a couple shops left and right start to open up into a square with a well in the middle of it. There's a couple tents and market stalls that are set up uh, in the perimeter of the market. And then you also now see that this is where the hill ward, the north ward, and the lock ward all kind of meet in the middle. Uh, in the south, you see the large estates and kind of the well-to-do, wealthy homes um, that make up the hill ward. You can also see a several hundred feet past the market where the um, north road opens up into the amber road, um, which is the main thoroughfare or thoroughway between the gate and the marrow, kind of the northern marrow valley. Um, and as you pass as well, you definitely notice um, groups of crowns guard that are kind of on the corners of the streets um, and so on. And as you pass, they don't seem to take too much. Um, they, they take note of you as you're this group kind of parading, um, shoved into a wagon uh, as you head southwest. But it doesn't seem as though they recognize you or are taking any further note other than this is an interesting group, a motley crew of folks who are traveling south. I'll stay whatever, 20 feet back or something like that just to okay. maybe separate the group a little, a okay. little bit. Sure. Gaziel rides her pony kind of just to the right of the wagon. Congratulations, getting mounts in D and D. This is a big, this is a big milestone. Ish, mounts ish. Okay. It's a milestone, you said. Yeah. Therefore, not that kind of milestone. Level, level six. Oh. <laughs> Good try, there. Close. Um, I believe we are going through. I don't. I mean, the crowns guard aren't doing anything to us. They don't need to because we haven't broken any laws here. Correct. Uh, and we are heading through the market area. Yep. Are you heading right out to the road? I would assume so. Yeah. Somebody needs to stop. Operation okay. Act Casual? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't be suspicious. Don't, Don't be, be suspicious. suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> and that, as you pass through the market street, it, it's a hubbub of uh, sellers and um, merchants uh, kind of yelling out and um, displaying their wares. Vegetables, meats, handcrafted goods. Uh, and simple wares are all kind of on sale as you kind of pass through and continue on to the Amber Road. Once you reach the Amber Road, um, Zinn, you know that you can head immediately west all the way to the Searing Green Forest um, where you will meet it and then you can follow the edge of it or do whatever you'd like to do heading north to um, the Bromkiln Hills, which, you know, the Searing Green Forest kind of like meets in a peak uh, in a rounded sort of area, and then continues, and, and then past that is where you need to be, or just north of that, uh, mm -hmm. a number of miles uh, is where you need to be. Um, yeah, it's about we'll start yeah. heading towards the west. Go ahead, mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Uh, I was saying, yeah, we'll start heading towards the west, yeah. Okay. Um, you do know that it is about um, a three-day trek back. Um, and uh, you had come northeast before from your camp and so now you're heading directly west um which is just under three i think i said three days to trust and wald right i think it was it was yeah it, it, it was three days to yeah so it's, yeah. it's about two and a half days to get back to the searing green forest from here okay okay All uh right. i i'm i assume we just all start tracking it yeah that's uh, great it's well as well the question is mm. it was three days when we were on foot yeah. What is it with the wagons? Yeah. So travel speed horses. travel speed would be the speed of the horses. Um, it doesn't add to speed. It just allows you to travel longer distances. Um, yeah. Which second, yeah, yeah yeah it doesn't add to speed, but that that, yeah. that lessens time yep. because we've traveled longer with more distances. Yeah. And it also allows you to if you want to ride your horse or ride your horses harder, you can also go faster. Um, but then yeah, they risk that. exhaustion and all of that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. I don't um, think that's necessarily necessary. I'm just curious is because, I mean, I'm assuming our base speed is 30 and the draft horses is, what, yeah. 50, 40? I'm I don't looking know. at it right now. Um, um, whoa, 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 Yeah, so the draft horse 40. speed is 40. 
So you're going to so not going, much of a difference. Yeah, so not much enough. of a difference. And the riding horses, you're all going to move at the same speed, anyways. Um, I'm assuming um, because you want to stay in the group. Um, and so, yeah, riding horse speed is also is sixty. So riding speed on a draft uh, on a riding horse is double, but you need to keep up with the wagon, which is pulling at about forty feet. Um, and then, so I would say. I'd say you go about, yeah, so it's, it's just over two days. So you're cutting almost like a quarter to a half a day off your travel. Okay. By having the horses now. Uh, and again, now you can do other things while you're in the wagon, which before you had to focus on walking. Uh, and that's the benefit of having a horse is it can carry more things and, and so on and so forth. All right. Um, okay, you head uh, west. Please take off. Two days of rations, we'll say. And um, at this point, it is kind of halfway through your third day um, when you kind of, at the beginning of the day, you kind of see the Searing Green Forest in, like across the fields in the distance. By the time you get there, you're at about, I'd say noon on the third day, um, as you kind of start to crest the outer reaches of the forest. And the forest is gorgeous at this uh, level, and that um, you've never kind of gone deep into the Syrian Green Forest yet, and the outer reaches are really, really, really gorgeous. Um, and quite green, lush, um, and not incredibly dense, so you can f move fairly easily through it, even with a wagon. Um, and you do see as you kind of head, start to head north along the edge of it, eventually you see a path into the forest, which is kind of as wide as you need for a wagon and for your horses. But you'd have to follow kind of in a, in, in a single file line with a horse, with horses and wagons kind of stacked like this. Otherwise you're, you're veering through trees and that's just not gonna work with a wagon. Um, with that, you start to head into the forest. Um, Zin and G crew, as you kind of get onto this road now, you kind of have some decisions to make. Um, do you want to venture deeper into the forest proper? Do you want to stay kind of on the utter reaches? Um, do you want to continue to follow this road? Which, Zin, you know that there's a road that kind of leads kind of closer to the edge of the forest and not incredibly deep. Um, it dips in, I'd say, a couple hundred miles. Uh, sorry, not a couple hundred miles, what am I saying? Um, this road would dip in 50 to 100 miles at its deepest into the forest. But again, the forest is so vast that that isn't a crazy depth when it comes to the danger that you know potentially exists inside of the forest and you've heard of previously. Um, well, I mean, once we get closer to the forest, I'll say, so we... Uh know that there are some kind of wolves within this space. I would assume they are deeper inside versus towards the outskirts. I guess so. I, I don't think I've noticed any any wolf tracks yet, although I'm not very much of an expert. That's exactly what I was going to ask, though. Does hmm. anybody here know how to track? Because I don't. Hmm. Hmm? Uh, no, I would just I imagine that, that if we were qualifications. purposely out hmm. To hunt these wolves, then we wouldn't want to be on the main road, perhaps? Uh, well, the, perhaps. the forest is just very large, so I don't, um, I don't know where to start, really. Yes, but I know what well, a paw print looks like. I happen to be pretty good at tracking. I can pick up scents and things. Are you sure you're sober enough? Uh, at this point, yeah, it's, it's been, been some days. time. It's been days. <laughs> this whole time I've just been <laughs> yeah, just watching checking. You. Yeah, okay. Careful, your Dimitri's showing. Um, <laughs> and, you know, eventually, Plunk actually ends up sharing the pony with uh, Gaziel. Um, and you've noticed, too, over the last 
couple days, as soon as he kind of came to after the bender, um, started to kind of go back to Plunk's nat- like previous disposition and acting more like a Kenku and not just talking in Gab's voice um, openly. Not so at much. all? Not even mm. once? Not even once <laughs> in the last two days. Um, because there's a new person in the party that he doesn't know potentially if he could. That's what you guys gather. Mm. And so, and he it has, over the last two days, kind of gathered you all separately and said, you know, I'm going to not speak as Gab. Um, we don't know this person. And so, yeah, I'm just going to play it, play it carefully. Okay. And as you're kind of heading through the forest, again, the, the sun um, is, is the, the rays are kind of, projecting through the leaves and it's quite blissful and serene and quiet and the breeze every once in a while leaves are falling to the ground and it's actually quite nice um and in the midst of that plunk pulls out his loot and you hear him say don't ride in my pony Mm-mm. god damn it i knew you were gonna do that Mm-mm. i was waiting Mm-mm. and he's, he's just strumming along as he as he, uh, as he as as they go along. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> I was waiting. Yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, I should have expected it. Um. So, uh, we should continue inside. Then, uh, I I am in accordance that I do not think these wolves would be so. Um, Unwise, I guess, to come out to the outskirts. They would be more deep within, but that does mean be on your guard because we are entering their territory. This is not a part of the forest I am particularly used to. Jason, did I yes. do any... Um, I'm ready. Do I have any sort of maybe pre-reconnaissance done on where the attacks were happening? Or? And uh, Gaziel also says... Um, well, um, they did say that the attacks did happen on the road. They were in wagons. So I don't know, oh. we don't know where. You're totally right. But yeah. this is the main road through the, the forest. So I imagine, Zin, is there any other way that they could have been traveling? I mean, if they did attack on the road, you're correct. I did not um, recall that part. Um, to be quite honest, anyway whether we're on the road or within the forest. If they attacked here, they'll attack anywhere. But that also tells me if they attacked on the road, they were attacking for a reason. Hmm. Uh, 12 on my roll. Okay. All right. Um, with a 12, um, the only thing I would say that you uh, remember is that, or that you found out previously, was that it was on this on this road. It was kind of the main sort of trade route through the Syrian yeah. forest. Um, which is weird that wolves would even be that this far out of the central uh, area. Um, and anyone who is who is who has spent any time in the Merrow Valley, so that would specifically be Zin, um, and you, Greg, uh, you're, you're new to the area. Zin, you would know um, stories of fantastical creatures that live further in. Um, mm-hmm. You've heard, actually, give me a history check, please, on the on the forest, and I'll tell you exactly what you remember. 18. Okay. Um, with an 18, you absolutely rem- uh, have heard that um, onk eggs actually are known to be a problem, especially deeper in. Um, and, you know, stories around campfires and sung in taverns tell of uh, a part of the forest, especially closer to the center um, and the central areas and the, and the darker reaches of the forest where the veil between the Feywild and the natural world grow thin um and people you know you've heard stories of, of pixies and fairies and and other fey type creatures that um people have you know gotten lost and ventured too deep into the forest and then been greeted by gotcha at a certain point while we're still traveling i want to without gregory noticing maybe if he's ahead of us a little so uh, yeah, actually, so first let's get a, a marching order for the wagon and the two horses. So who is leading the the procession? I could be in front. You want to be in front? Okay. Anybody have an issue with that? No. Uh, no, but I will say that 
um, then if we're going if we're going cart speed, yeah, right now, yeah, um, Zen's gonna hop down and be with close at the front with Gregory because I walk as fast as the cart goes. Okay, nice, <laughs> nice. And and do you guys want to be close proximity to each other? Do you want to be ahead at all? I don't see a reason to be split up between me and yeah. Greg personally, but okay. I mean. Yeah, I mean, like, five, ten feet five, ahead, ten feet, right? Like sure. Just yeah. Sort of. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're, like, five, ten feet ahead, yeah. Um, and Gaziel and Plunk will take up the back, then. With the... Oh, don't break things. With the uh, cart in the middle. Okay. With Gregory in front, I want to try to sneakily send a midge and mechanical claw. <laughs> Just, I want to look a little closer at his side arm. Okay. But I want, I don't want him to know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so this is what we're gonna do. Slide Instead of a sleight of hand, we're gonna do an Arcana check. Um, so add your Arcana bonus to a Dexterity check. Oh. To, okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Against my what? Passive uh, perception. Or passive I be perception. Passive. Okay. I would say. Okay. I, I I rolled Arcana, but I should have rolled Dexterity. It's okay. We'll do it Ar Ar Arcana straight because you're you're controlling this. It's not so much about being careful. You're it's your magic that is controlling this hand. Okay. And so Arcana check straight Arcana. Then fourteen. Okay. What's your passive perception? Sixteen. Okay. Yep. Um, you kind of sense something kind of brush your side near your holster. And as you look down, what does your mage head look like? It's, you know, like a claw machine. <laughs> <laughs> like a mechanical claw. Mm. The claw! Yeah. It moves. It moves. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Honestly, I would draw my sword and I would just like slash down yeah. towards whatever's grabbing at my, yeah. at my pepper box. Okay, and it just, you, you feel, because um, you, your mage head doesn't have any hit points or anything, right? Uh, it's attacked, what happens to it? Let's see. I don't, I don't um... Okay, spectral floating hand. So it lasts for the duration. It vanishes if it's even more than 30 feet away. Uh, I guess it's, uh, you can use it to manipulate an object, open and unlock door container, slowly retrieve an item from an open container. So I guess it's spectral. It's spectral, right? So it, it kind of, yeah, it's spectral. Anybody else know anything about uh, Mage Hand? It, nothing it, happened. Yeah. You, you can't attack Mage yeah, Hand. So, yeah. so you feel some <laughs> resistance as it kind of goes through it, because yep. it's passing through a spectral magical yeah. form. But you notice that it, and when that happens, because you're quite a ways back, you're, you're kind of in the, what do you do when that happens? Do you? Um, yeah, as soon as I see him, like, notice it and swipe it, yeah. I'll, like, yeah. I'll pull it away, make it yeah, seem like he killed it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> okay. with, the, with the passive side, do I, do I notice it was him? Sleight of hand. Now it's a sleight of hand to see if you can hide the fact that you were actually and this encanting. And would be an active perception? Because I'm not. Yes, active perception. Wait, did he show his mage hand earlier? <laughs> Uh, not, did, not to, he, not to you. He did. Well, his, when his he was showing, he, he brought out the main like, chant to like. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But like, yeah. he, he killed but, but again, you, before, you came right? through. You came through us. Yeah. You know, to, yeah. to notice. Yeah. Um, but I rolled this a. Play. Uh, that's a twenty-five on perception check. Jesus. <laughs> I rolled a 19 on the die. Uh, my sleight of hand is a six. Okay. So I literally... So yeah, he fumbles kind of like, <laughs> scarily as you kind of look back. Yeah, so I mean, like, I have the, the sword out and yeah. I, I kind of like, I, I draw the horse around to face the cart yeah. and I'm actively scanning and then I just lock yeah. eyes with Bolton. <laughs> you. It I was me. You. <laughs> no. I just wanted to I, look. You're lucky I like you. I just, I got... I, Decent look at it before, and I thought maybe it, it is a curious invention, I'm sure, but it's mine. I if maybe if, if you're on best behavior, possibly I will let you look. At while it. they're while they're talking, can I make sure nothing's going to sneak up? Because right. <laughs> they're yeah. out. Yeah, perception yeah. check. Are we talking <laughs> thirty minutes? Um, I'm going to have my familiar help me. Well, let's talk. Let's okay, five minutes. We'll go to five minutes. Ah. Let's start. Maybe if you show him Best yours, minute. he could show you his. <laughs> nine. <laughs> nine. All right. Well, nine, two no. eights. Yeah, nothing, nothing of note yet, as of now. Um, okay, I'm, I'll sort of sit up straight and like act very proper. Best behavior. Five <laughs> minutes. Best behavior. Yes. Well, what, what's the plan in five minutes? If he is on his best behavior for five, uh, if he's on his best behavior, I will for five minutes let him inspect my weapon. Wow. Okay. All right. From afar, you're, from not, you're not 
You're not taking this thing apart. It's just <laughs> quite complex. Well, I'm not going to take it. I'm very good with like putting things together. I'm sure you are, but this is nothing that you have dealt with before, I'm sure. Well, try, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Best behavior and we'll, we'll see. Okay. All right. Okay, so as you continue on um, along the road, um, with a nine, you don't necessarily notice anything. Um, Gregory, can I? And, and you've now traveled for several hours. It's kind of mid afternoon. Um, we'll take off the rations at the end of the day once you've kind of cleared through another day of rations. Um, if I can get a perception check for anybody who is looking out to see if there's anything going on. Yes. Did I use my investigation or survival instead using my nose? Yes, you can. Uh, I'd say survival for sure. Mm. Are you trying to see if there's anything, like, what what are you what are you trying to to, to find exactly? Because if, if you're just listening, I, then that would be perception. If you're actively like trying to see if there's, pr- uh, yeah, what are you trying to do? I, I'd be listening and sniffing the air, just trying to, you know, gauge, just just trying to pick up anything that smells or sounds wolf-like. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I would say that if you're not actively like um, tracking, right? Yeah, if you're not actively be tracking, because okay. um, even so then we could still perception. work it out with your senses. Um, but if you're sitting in the wagon still and you're just like opening up your senses yeah. to kind of hear the dis- in the distance, I would say that's persu- per- perception. Yeah. Okay, I'll do that then. Yeah. I got a. Uh, that's twenty-four. Okay. Natural wow. twenty. Natural 20 for both. Wow. Mm-hmm. No, Orange Gaming. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you don't have a producer to Orange. trigger it. <laughs> Sorry? I rolled a 10. Okay. I'm keeping my nine because I just did it, so I'm not going to roll again. Natural 20 for how much? 28. Okay. Wow. Okay. All right. Now I had a 15. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, nothing of note currently. Um, you... You know, Bolt, as, as you kind of take it in, you kind of close your eyes and you start to listen and you hear all of the wildlife that exists. And things have been quite um, dangerous and you're always looking over your shoulders. And for the first time since you started this adventure, you don't feel like you're doing that now. Even though you're in a dangerous place and you know that wolves potentially <laughs> will attack, um, it's not like you're afraid that a Zalezo around every corner is going to stop you. For the first time, there's there's a peace and there's a serenity with being in the wild that you haven't experienced in some time. Hmm. Um, this is very nice. <laughs> it's, it's quite nice. Um, with a, a and, and uh, snow, same thing. Like, uh, for the first time, you kind of are able to take it all in and it's been several days now since the unfortunate incident with your sister and perhaps you're starting to appreciate the environment a bit more. You're starting to take in the surroundings and you were thinking about it all time, all the time, every day, every hour. And perhaps now it's starting to like, you'll remember her from time to time, but it's not constant. It's not this constant nagging sort of situation. You, you have a mission and you're, you're, you're finding the ability to kind of get past it. And it's by surrounding yourself in this environment and this, and this, which again, you haven't seen, I mean, you've seen tropical, and this is quite different. Um, there's, a, there's a different essence to the Merrow Valley and the Sierra Green Forest that you haven't really um, experienced before. In fact, the birds sound different. Um, animals sound different. The trees sound different. Um, that ocean breeze isn't warm. It's kind of cool as it passes through for now. Um, and it's very clear that you're far away from home. All right. Um, anything you want to do for the next couple hours, while you travel the next couple hours for anyone? And if not, that's fine. I'm going to, uh, with Zinn walking next to me, um, just sort of engage conversation because um, he's mentioned that he's been in the area. Um, so um, you've sort of said you had a, a camp around here. Are you um, familiar with the, the forest? Uh, yes, I was in... More of a northern area. Um, I used it as a temporary residence when I was traveling down to the Wuyang Gorge. Uh, but I know a little bit, yes. So ha- have, have you seen the wolf attacks? No, uh, I have not. Have you seen have not. where wolves might be? Wolves can be anywhere. So I have seen where a wolf can be, 
have not seen wolves here as of That's yet. my fault. I was too vague. Um, have you seen possibly where a den could be? No. If I had, I would have just taken us there. Okay. Do you know of any uh, settlements in the Siren Green that maybe they would know? Are there any sort of remote sort of groups? Do I know yours? anything about anything in the uh, forest? Uh, sorry, specifically, I was just like referencing settlements, you. some sort of like remote gathering of people that maybe exist that he's aware of. Um, to the general public, anything that is within the forest is kind of kept fairly secretive. Um, other than the things that I mentioned before, not really. Um, there is a uh, there is word that a significant amount of elves, like the, the, that there is an elf settlement somewhere in the Searing Green, but that's all you know. Um, what was your history check that you gave me earlier? 18? 18. With an yeah. 18, you do know on the northern tip of the Searing Green, there is an old mine, an old platinum mine um, that has since fallen into disrepair. Um, and there is history of a castle that exists, actually, within the forest. But other than that, that's all you know. Okay. <clears throat> to my understanding, no. Not much is within the forest itself, other than creatures, different entities. Uh, nothing like a settlement. There was a mine, and there was talks of um, some kind of castle of sorts, but none of that is currently in use, at least from what I know. No, that's, that's, that's fair. It's, I just don't know where to start, and I was hoping... You all seem so capable. I just thought for sure you'd know something. But... Well, well, that's a good assumption, but you need to understand that not everyone knows everything. Sometimes you figure things out as you do. We're currently on the road to figure out what might be. I'm Have sure with feeling, time, though. we will figure it out. Have a good feeling. I think we're going to do good things here. I think this, this is going to be fun. Can... I... Gregory seems too eager. Mm. Is there a hidden spot between, like, underneath that eagerness? Is he, like, searching for something? Does it seem like he's looking for more other than the wolves? Like, he's just reading. Okay, insight. What is my insight? 19. What does he know with the 19? Um, um, the 19. Um, you, you get the sense that he is, his eagerness towards finding the wolves is, is, is genuine. Um, there's definitely something else there, though. It's, he's not on the, he, he's not being completely on the up and up, let's say. You, you can tell he's keeping something back. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Discord. Oops. Uh, he notes that. Uh, he just says, again, with time, we will figure it out. I'm sure whatever we are looking for, whatever you are looking for, will be fine. And he just Honestly, gives like a just very a, simple just smile. A really good payday would be fantastic, and I'm sure they'll give us a good payday if we can sort out this wolf problem for trust and wolf. Oh. Oh, that changes things. It seems like you were doing this out of the um, kindness of your own heart, but now that gold is actually. Well, I don't have factor. any sort of contract. I just assume that if I did something for them, they would, you know. Um, it should not be in a good Samaritan. You're not doing this just because your heart is telling you to do it. You're doing it so you can potentially gain. Yes. You're looking for this as an opportunity yes. to rise but above also your because own station. It's good. Well, I could go it and, like... I could get a contract to just murder people and make money. I don't want to do that. I want to help people. Why would the first thing you think of when a contract is involved is killing people? There are contracts for many different occasions. Well, I'm just saying, I could do things for bad, and I could do things for good. Saving a town from wolf attacks is good. Interesting. 
I'm I, sure the goodness that you seek will be uh, quite visible very soon. I'm hoping so. Am I, am I picking up on the sarcasm? Um, I'm assuming. Probably. Roll for sarcasm. Roll for sarcasm. Uh, not a great insight. 12 on the insight, but. I'll do a deception just to play. Yeah, no, that's a 22. Genuinely think that you were just as eager as I am. <laughs> he just smiles and continues to walk. As uh, the as the conversation ends, the daylight is starting to wane. Um, it's getting into late afternoon, um, nearing dusk at this point, uh, as the light is kind of fading and not coming through the treetops, but kind of in the distance slightly, and getting darker within the forest, obviously, than it would be outside of the forest. Um, and you're approaching your first evening, and it's starting to get a little hungry. I sort of loudly clean my throat. <clears> throat> I've been on my best behavior. Yes, indeed. I suppose. Are we going to stop and make camp, or should we just press on into the night? There's no uh, issue with stopping. Um, how do you, the rest of you feel? I feel I think like we're far camp. from, yeah, if we're, if we're far from civilization, camp would be the right way to go. Hmm. Totally good. Fine, five minutes. And I'll start getting off and... Okay. All right. Unpacking. How would you like to set up camp on the road, <laughs> folks? Uh, we can pull off to the side. If there's like a little area that's a little more open. Not open. Like, yep. you know, we're just going to get, you know, utterly ambushed. But just a little spot that we can just set up. Um, um, off the road or like, on the road? Off. I would uh, say off the a road. A little off the road. We don't want to just camp on the road that just feels no. weird <laughs> um a little out of view for safety's sake yeah okay. how far off the road do you want to be maybe what 20 25 feet okay yeah, that feet. sounds good yeah and are Not you st- are you stopping for are you stopping for the evening are you setting up camp or are you just moving off the to rest mm. and eat or are you going to continue to travel after that I, I was how, assuming how much more we were daylight do we have? Camp for the night. Yeah, like do we have yeah, much we can, more daylight can... in the forest? Or I, I would getting... imagine you probably have, um, you probably have the equivalent of about two more hours. So it's about the equivalent of six, seven p.m. Hmm. and and it'll be night in a, in a couple hours. Yeah, we can set up camp and actually rest because we've been, you know on the road for a while, even though, you know, we, we, we stopped for a bit, but, you know, this is an actual just kind of rest, rest, and we could be in space, yeah. Okay. Okay, as soon as we find uh, a I will good su- spot. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Dog with a bone, man. <laughs> Splendid! And I'll... <laughs> <laughs> Bonfire! Okay. All right. And, yeah, I, s- and Sierra's very much going to opt for rations and free food rather than um, hunting okay. for the evening. Okay. And she will tend to the horses and make sure that they're fed and cared for and comfortable. Okay, so I would say at this point then take off another days of rations for everyone. Mm. As we all kind mm. of, as you all, not we, as you all set up camp. Um, that's a big bonfire. How big is your bonfire supposed to be? Um, let me see. I think it's a five foot cube. Yeah, okay, uh, so this is this is more like the size <laughs> of the bonfire. Um, and, and are you setting up? Okay. Um, and uh, in order to set up this camp, um, any specific way? Um, I'm going to set up my tent. Um, uh, no, I'm not. Um, uh, I am just going to, you know, just make sure I have my bed rolling stuff for when we need it. Um, and I will just say when we're all ready to bed down, I will put up my dome for safety. Okay. So you are going to do your dome. Okay. So we'll do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. The dome of safety. camp in the wild without a dome. <laughs> Did the horses fit in? <laughs> no. uh, we're going we're gonna to find out. <laughs> they certainly don't. <laughs> 
one moment, actually. I have a dome. It I is, have a dome, but dome, is it like dome. 15 feet at the most? I have it is a 10-foot radius. 10-foot. I had a dome. I gotta use it. Shout out Whiskids. Whiskids! Whiskids! Talk, talk amongst yourselves. <clears throat> As I uh, inspect... <laughs> Or so. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll take I'll take the pepper yes, box yes. out and I'll find a nice like flat rock, kind of nearby the campfire, the bonfire. Mm. And How big's the dome? I'll put it down. Omega. Oh mm-hmm. Yeah. Five minutes. <laughs> Ten foot radius. So that's the dome. Oh. Maybe you don't need to have it over the, the bonfire. Uh, yeah. So where do you want the dome as opposed to the campfire itself? Um. Kind of off to, the, off to the side of the campfire? Uh, yeah, yes, yes. I would say just off to the side a little bit, only because, uh, so in Zenric's mind, this is potentially also bait for him. Okay. Um, they're going to see the fire, but they won't see people in around the fire if something does come. Um, and just, know, just so you know, um, wording is weird. Um, but it does specifically say nine creatures of medium or small I can fit in the go dome with me. So um, it's going to be able to fit everybody. Not uh, the horses. But, yeah, though. I guess a little, a little off to the side. And the dome inside is warm, so we don't necessarily need the bonfire's warmth from okay. it. Okay. So we're going to say that's the dome space. Horses Perfect. will have to stay elsewhere. Yes. Okay. Um, and I'm assuming you can tie the horses to a tree nearby. Oh, if they'll stand. And the dome is not up yet, just so you know. Okay. Yeah. When is I have to be in, I have to be inside of it. So when we actually start the bed down and start doing um, watches, that's yeah. when I'll put up the dome. Okay. And how long does it take to cast? Uh, it takes 10, 10 minutes, eleven minutes. Okay. All right. So currently you're just all around the fire. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As you start to have your rations and okay, you guys can go ahead and do your inspection. Five minutes. Yes. Oh yes. All right, all right. I'm. I put the pepper box down facing you. Mm-hmm. Don't take it apart. Don't break it. <laughs> I would never do such a thing to such a marvelous oh, piece of equipment. <clears throat> I uh, can I tell if it's like a strictly mechanical invention or if there's any sort of magic to it? Uh, Arcana check. That's. Okay, 18. Uh, with an 18, no, it, it seems strictly mechanical. Hmm. Uh, are you... Although, highly intricate. Like, hmm. pretty incredible craftsmanship. Um, okay, are you... Are you uh, watching me do this? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> like, hovering just a little bit too close. for like Just like it's... I'm very cautious about you looking at this. Mm, it's, yes, it's very... In- don't, don't t- well, it's, it's got a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, just parts to it, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> and then you, uh, I'll pull out a little, some, an ammunition, piece of ammunition from my pouch. And it fires this. Oh. Put it in the, the chambers there and away it goes. Can I see what, what that's like? Just one of those. Yes. I'll give him one of the pieces of ammunition. Mm. Mm. Interesting, interesting. So this goes... In the chamber. Mm. I'll open the chamber and I'll show him the chamber and mm. then where the ammunition goes in. Ah, so if I were to... You're not. Your permission. But if, well, you were, if you were... If I were. Go in there. And I can... And with my mage hand, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I'm sort of slowly lifting a tiny screwdriver. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and uh, looking for an opening. If you're distracted at all, I'll. So this. Goes here. Does that mean that? Yeah. So it, it goes in the chamber, right? And then there's six of them, so you can put six in. Well, six. In. But then in this one, it goes. Pfft. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so I would say Arcana check, uh, and I would say 
Oh, is it insight or uh, insight or perception? I'd say perception. Okay. Nineteen. Oh, our come in there. Twenty-three. Oh, okay. So, what are you attempting to do with this little screwdriver? I am. I'm making it better. Okay. I am oh. applying an infusion. Oh. Now that I know that it has like uh, ammo and like the yeah. load property, I'm using yeah. the repeating shot infusion, which I do know, and. I have, like, as soon as, like, you see somebody do something quick. Yeah. And then I just sort of backed up. <laughs> I told I, you not to, I mean, what did you do to it? You can tell there's, like, I, sort I just of. I start pulling, like, tinkering tools, and I'm like, what did I. You can tell there's, it's like. It's glowing. Why is it glowing? <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw how, how carefully you were handling what that little, that little rock was, and I figured, what it's if. It's not a rock. It's a piece of highly complicated ammunition. What I was just thought, what if you didn't even need that? What? What? What if it, <laughs> well, if it, if it, if it just if it just could just fire the way that you know how like what? if you if you spit on something you can spit as much as you want and you never need to well you you still have to produce this but if you didn't need to produce the spit I have to spit on my gun no maybe I'm um, it it I, I made it better you don't need you don't need those things anymore to put it in there I, it's already always full it's always full. Okay, so I, I just like sit, I, I like I almost like pout, sit down cross-legged with it, and I just start like looking at like trying to figure out what exactly he's done to it. Yeah, and and what is uh, just for those at home? What does an infusion actually do physically to it? Is it, is it a mechanical thing? Is yeah, it what does it do? Magical to thing. Um, so it's now. Well, I'll just read the infusion. This magic weapon grants a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls made with it when used to make ranged attacks, and it ignores the loading property. If the weapon lacks ammunition, it produces its own, automatically creating one piece of magic ammunition when the wielder makes a ranged attack with it. The ammunition created by the weapon vanishes the instant after it hits or misses a target. I'm trying to figure out how that works with pepper boxes, because I don't it doesn't have a loading property, it has a reloading property property. Hmm. So I don't know exactly. It just means you're you're yep. gonna be ignoring you you don't need to load it. Yeah, you don't need so to basically load it. if it's a reload it, property, it, that doesn't exist. It just keeps firing. firing. Yeah. Yeah, you can just fire it. Without reloading it. All right then. Maybe, it, maybe yeah. give it a try. Without and, and, sorry, and it's an instant thing. It's like casting a spell, or is it, uh, is it a mechanical thing so, that you would add to it? So the infusion itself yeah. is. I just have to touch it. Wow. Okay. And um. The uh, oh no, that's not it. Infuse item. I can read what it says. Using an item, when you finish a long rest, you can touch a non-magical item and yeah. imbue it with one of your artificial infusions, turning it into a magic item. Wow. Okay. So now, yeah. So now it, it glows. So I, I don't put the bullets in. No, and you can I just, just fire. You can just keep those, just in case we have a different one. But yes, this one will always be loaded. Let's give it a shot. And I just grab it. And I just start unloading into the nearest tree. Okay. <laughs> All of a sudden, the cacophony of, <laughs> and as. The, as they impact, the blue magical energy sp splitting splinters off the tree. The horses, mmm, I don't like that. <laughs> and you hear that, Zira, from one of them. Uh, can you always speak with animals, or do you have to cast it or, or, or initiate uh, I it? have it at will, so I can. Okay, yeah. So you hear, mmm, and as you listen in, blah, 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 what is that noise? Blah, blah. And why did I do this anyways? These apples suck. Um, and hey. <laughs> it's not worth it. Oh, I'm worth apples. Um, and uh, I got, made myself dizzy doing that. Um, and uh, anyway, so all of you kind of jump a little bit uh, when this happens. And just, this is fun! <laughs> and there's like just a hole just burrowed into the tree. And I just stop after maybe like 12 shots. Okay, so when it, when it stops, some of your ears are ringing. Um, and um, Snow, you've heard, I'd say you probably heard artillery go off. Um, cannons, obviously, it, and you smell that smell of gunpowder emanating. It brings you back to some of your roots. Um, the rest of you have heard of this. I've never really seen this happen, even though you've seen magical um, explosions and so on. This is different, and the smell that comes off this thing, oh, it wouldn't be gunpowder. It wouldn't be gunpowder. It's magical, so there's a magical energy, actually, that kind of sits in the air in the smell, uh, and you can tell that it's doing significant amounts of damage, more so than your normal ammunition did. 
slightly more so than yep. your ammunition did, and as soon as they hit, it dissipates. Okay. And so um, plus one, plus one? Mm -hmm. Immediately in the distance, you hear a wolf howl. Didn't think about that one. Well, I think it worked. I... Perhaps they will find us. I think that was quite the smart choice. I like your enthusiasm. It was uh, totally part of the plan. Yeah. Yes. Should we take watch? The, the, hearing the howling, um, it was it was just like one big howl and done. It seemed like something now knows. Nature check. Our, oh, that's not bad for me. Is that last until like you just? That is a mm -hmm. seventeen. Okay. Um, with a seventeen, um, sorry, and you're trying to decide what it kind of is, or like what? what I'm just kind of decide. Like we heard, a, we heard, a, we heard howls or a big howl. Yeah. Does it seem like it was just one thing and done, or does it now seem that something's now alert to our presence, or to like to alert to the area we're in? It was in response to the noise that it heard. Mm -hmm. I right, say, well. Now, if we were looking for wolves, they know where we are, so I would prepare. I don't know how far they are, but now they at least know that something's here. Hmm. I, uh, Tajna is going to fly up into the tree line. Okay. Um, and just start to scalp. Okay. Uh, Perception check for her, please. Yep. I get uh, advantage because she has keen sight. Okay. Ooh, 22. Okay. Um. They had no idea it was going to be so loud. How far out do you want to go? Uh, She's going to fly a little bit. She has a fly. She has a speed of 60 feet. So she's going to kind of like go a, a quick perimeter, okay, especially so, towards that area. Yeah. Uh, sorry, how far? How far from camp? Like a radius. Um, about uh, she's got to. I'm actually going to move over to Sierra, uh, and I'll say, "Would you mind if I hold your shoulder for a second? Hold my shoulder. Yes. Uh, I have a connection with Tajna, but sometimes uh, I can't." be in control of myself when I do. So I like to ground myself. Oh, certainly. Um, I'd like to ground myself as well. Can, and Sierra will like kind of crouch down and take a position that's like the fire's behind her, but she could look out. Uh, yeah, and I'll just like put my hand on her on the shoulder and then I'll like look towards where Tarzan is and I go stiff. Like I'm almost like a, a mannequin for a second. Um, as I put my presence into Tajna, so I can okay. actually see through her. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go about like 100 feet. 100 feet out? Yep. Okay. In a 100 foot uh, well, circle. Yeah. yeah. I was saying, I'm going to go until I get to the 100 feet area. Yeah. Uh, and if I don't see anything from there, she'll just fly back. Okay. But that's where she's going to start going. Okay. And at the 100 foot area, that's the radius, right? 100 feet out from camp and then a circle? Yep. Okay. Yeah, at the hundred foot mark, nothing. You you don't see any sort of disturbances within a hundred feet. Okay. While I'm flying, does it seem like there was there is just any more howls, anything like that, in any area? Uh, you don't hear anything else now. Okay. Yeah, noted. it. He uh, Tajna would do a, a big perimeter real quick. Yeah. Um fly back to a point that's above where we are, yeah. and I'll come out, just kind of roll out of that. <sighs> Nothing yet, but it doesn't mean something isn't coming. When it comes, we will be ready. I look dead at Gregory and I say, I would hope so. Well, I, I'm ready. I'm I'm sure you, you will all be, you seem very, like I said, capable, so. I'm gonna climb a tree. I'm gonna try to just climb a tree. Okay. <laughs> okay, give me an athletics check. Uh, athletics? Yeah. 16. Okay, so you start to climb the tree fairly simply, grabbing branches as you go, moving at half speed. 
You hear another wolf howl in the distance. This one a little more distant than the last. Di more distant? Mm -hmm. Slightly more distant. Mm, that's concerning. <laughs> well, that one sounded further away. I'll just keep climbing. Right, but I believe they're just signaling each other. I think we will have more than just a single pack on our hands. Uh, immediately, uh, Plunk kind of walks out from the group um, and casts Rope Trick. <laughs> and uh, in true uh, on brand, and for him, and uh, begins to climb. Um, I'm just going to just look around, um, just take note of the surrounding area as far as like um, uh, what's walkable, what's not walkable, stuff like that, just so I know my own pathing eventually when they come. Okay. Um, and I'm also going to just begin to um, um, put my hands on my hilts of my scimitars. I'm going to bring them both out and just start to weave just ever so slightly. It's almost just prepping myself for what to come. Yep. And with that, I'm also um, holding when we see any form of wolf, yep. I'm going to instantly um, clang them together and start my blades on. Okay. All right. So that is where Plunk climbs his rope. Uh, so where do you want to be in at this point? Um, just this, this is the road over here. Yep. And you're off the um, road. Let's be a little away from the group, maybe uh, in the middle between the road and them, but not too, too far. Um, distance isn't really a thing for me. So, right. um, yeah, wherever works. Yeah, that's actually, that's perfect. Okay. Yep. Trees are still exist. I'm just taking the tops <laughs> off. Yeah. Of They're course, not just disappearing mm. in the world. Yeah. Um, everyone, anyone else want to do anything at this point? Uh, just even being close to the fire, but having uh, quite a bit of dark vision, Sira will still scan around the trees to see if she okay. notices anything. Yeah, you just heard another wolf howl. This one a but touch closer in a different it. direction. Okay. I'm going to patrol around uh, with my echo next to me. Okay, and how far out from the fire do you want to start your patrol? Uh, about 40 feet out. Just listening, smelling, trying to pick up anything. Okay. So you, you just head out and you start to do the full circle. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Um, once I'm up in the tree, I'm just going to try to nestle in enough to try to hide. You hear another wolf howl. Which tree do you want to be up in? Um, so I guess this one right here. This one? Or, or this, um, yeah, I'll go up here in this one. Okay. Yeah, All right, and by the horses. Uh, okay, Bolt, where do you want to be? Um, I will climb another tree. Okay. Can you give me an athletics check and uh, which tree? The, is someone in this one? Nope. You can be, how high do you want to be? Um, I'll be. Like there? Natural 20. Natural 20 brought to you by Forge Gaming. Beow, 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 beow. For a total of 19. Total of 19. <laughs> uh, so I guess, uh, yeah, I'll say. Okay, so this is you here? Yeah, I'll say th however high that sure. is. Either. Are you okay? You're good with that? Okay, mm -hmm. cool. All right. Um, and uh, Sira, you're kind of look just looking out and kind of trying to gather information about the surroundings. Yeah, and, and knowing that other people are kind of taking uh, cover, I will be the one that's like, yeah, I'll be out in the open. Come and get me. I'm ready for you. Okay. And then Yanil kind of hunkers down half in her shell um, or kind of prepared with her staff out in front of her. And you notice um, Gaziel recently has kind of taken to protecting her and kind of staying with her. Um, and so Gaziel takes out her hammer and stands beside you know, uh, facing kind of opposite of where you are facing, Sira. Um, at this point, Sira, just you are closer to the to the road. So as you turn, the road is, is is kind of a little further ahead, and you're kind of looking out in that direction. Um, will you allow? And it's okay if not, uh, because the blade song is a bonus action. Yeah. Um, it's something that's very quick. Will you allow me to actually like prep something else that goes with that? 
um, or a Jester to Blade song. That's totally fine if that. I'm just thinking. Sorry, of what um, I say, that, say that one more time. Um, I'm, I, I said when I see a wolf, I was going to pop the Blade song. Yeah. Or if I, if I think they're closer. Yeah. Um, since it's a bonus action and so quick, would you allow me to prep something else along with that? Um, sure. Or just the Blade song? It's totally fine. Yeah, because it's a bonus song. action. What, what, what is the other thing you want to prep a bonus action as well? It's an action. Yeah, um, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then I'm just going to, um, in the spot that I am, you see uh, Zen draw almost an infinity symbol with an extra circle. Um, so it's like, we, 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 with him being the circle in the middle, and then there's a circle to the right and a circle to the left of him that connects to his. He kind of draws that in the ground for a moment. Um, and he just continuously does that, just waiting. Okay. All right. You hear another wolf howl. This one markedly closer than the rest. Um, Snow, you notice that that one is... As you kind of are walking around um, and your echo is with you, you hear it's opposite of where you are past the camp, closer to the tree that you are currently in. Okay, then I'm gonna head in that direction. Okay, you're gonna cut through the camp? Yeah. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop and wait uh, on that on that spot there. Okay. Uh, hold an action to attack if anything comes within range. Okay. Can I get perception checks from everybody, please? Ooh, Ten. nat 20. Beep, 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 beep. Forge gaming. Forge gaming. Siete. Siete. It's from my, from my noble knights. Nice. Ooh, love. Nice set. Nice. Um, uh, 18 for me. Okay. 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 10. Okay. Anybody over a 15, um, it is clear that there is movement close to the direction that Hal came from. Probably about, at this point, um, somewhere between, uh, let's say, 50 to 100 feet out from the camp. Uh, you hear some rustling in the bushes north of, uh, so, yeah, north of where you are. Um, with the natural 20, um, Siri, you kind of look through and you see something pass from one tree to another across the road on this side. Is it on all fours or is it walking? It's low to the, it's lower to the ground. And I'm able to see it. Can I... Let me see. I, I would like to ready... A spell, okay. For if it comes too close okay. to camp. So if you see it come out again, you're, you're going to ready a spell in order to launch yes. it. Okay. All right. Okay. A couple more moments mo moments pass. Um, can I get another perception check from everyone, please? Natural twenty. Nope. Damn. Another 20. natural twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Not a net. Not a natural twenty for me, but yeah. very close. Okay. Only have a plus one to perception. Okay. All right. What was you, Sierra? What was that for you? Eleven for okay. me. I didn't roll All right. that high. You've lost track of that one that you were that you were tracking. Zin, what did you roll? Twenty. Not un, not natural. Okay. Thirty. Um, Zin, with that roll, um, th where you are, you hear movement and rustling northeast, in this direction, of where you are. Um. Anybody else over 15? You got a natural 20 for a what? 21. Okay. With a 21 and a natural 20, you see something four-legged behind the tree here. Um, just, it kind of ducks out, and you see its head pop out. And it's clearly a furry four-legged creature. Okay. Um, I've... I see it there. Uh, I'm going to say over there and cast fairy fire. Okay. All right. Mm. Cool. Okay. As you cast fairy fire, that's dancing lights. I actually have a fairy fire spell somewhere, but we're due uh, here. This is the fairy fire. This is dancing lights. Anyways. 
Okay, so you cast, it has to do a... Deck 16 save. Deck 16 save. It fails. Yes. And if now, there's any... seeing that with a readied spell, would my spell go off? Um, okay, yeah. So, um, uh, read me uh, dance, um, fairy? fairy Fire real quick. Okay, each object in a 20-foot cube within range is outlined in blue, green, or violet light. Let's say blue. Okay. Any creature in the area with, when the spell is cast is also outlined in the light. If it fails, the dexterity saving throw. For the duration, objects and affected creatures shed dim light in a 10-foot radius. An attack roll against an effective creature, affected creature or object has advantage if the attacker can see it, and the affected creature or object can't benefit from being invisible. Okay. So I would say at this point, you were looking in that direction, even with your bad per uh, perception check, all of a sudden you see a, a, a wolf, and it's a, I'd say medium-sized wolf, glows brightly in your direction blue. Um, so I would absolutely say that at this point, it's, it's been made visible to you, so you can use your ready to action. Cool. And I would assume that would trigger mine as well, because I say if I see something. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So mine I'll was an go. Eldritch Blast. It wasn't a huge. Okay. If there's any wolves in 20 feet, it would have been affected too. Just um, the cube of it. There aren't. Okay. So my, I, I can go ahead and fire off yep. those. Okay, so the first one is a. It's at advantage. It's at advantage? It's very fine. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so that's still an uh, 24 to hit. That's a hit. And that is. Where's my d10? Uh, uh, 12 points for the first one. Okay. And. Uh, dirty 20 for the second. To hit. Nice. To hit. And that is 10. Okay, 10 points of damage? Yeah. Okay, for a total of 22. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just to be clear, out of that 22 total, six of those are fire damage because of the genie thing. Okay, all right. All of a sudden, <laughs> ignites the forest just past where you guys are, and all of a sudden, all of you turn as this kind of force, exp it's, it's force damage, right? Eldritch Blast? It's force. Uh, and fire? Yeah. Six points of fire damage, the rest is force damage. Yeah, so if you, you see just these impacts of force damage hit nearby, and you hear <laughs> and this yelp from what you imagine would be a wolf close by, uh, and fire begins to kind of like catch in the area. Zin, you have your held action. So you- yep, uh the minute I see um, the fire, the minute I see the, the, the light, especially as, as it streaks by, um, I instantly bang my swords together. And at the same time, the, there's a blue glow underneath my um, my wrappings on my arms. Yeah. Um, so as it as it bangs together, that there's a force that almost reverberates off of me as I activate my blade song. But also I take those blades and I throw them outward and that blue force comes off and there are now three duplicates around me as I cast mirror image. Okay. Nice. <laughs> All right, very good. Um, I will, oh, geez, okay. All right, at this point, um, I would like everyone, please, to roll initiative. Thirteen for me. Okay, hang on a sec. Oh. Um, Good lord, keep that dice forever and ever. Now, wow. mirror image. Do you control <laughs> them separately? I've never used this green one before. <laughs> they they are just there. If I get attacked, I roll a d20 to determine okay. if it hits the duplicate or me. Okay, so I don't actually need to have other minis. No. No. Okay. All right. So if, if you want to track it, it's for you, but now. Yeah. I will track it. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, snow. Seven. Whoa, you rolled initiative and it showed up in my encounter tracker. D and D Beyond. Shout out. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's, that's really cool. cool. Wow. I should have rolled a voice. Do you want to re-roll in here then? Because I'm going to get a better score. No. Plunk? <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> Let's see if it works for, pl for Plunk. Hang on. I'll bring up Plunk's. Um, 
Actually, I'll try it with Gaziel. Here we go. With the sound. Oh, yeah. Let's see if it shows up. <laughs> it did, too. That's pretty cool. What? That's really cool. That's crazy. That's super cool. That's a handful. Well yeah. done, D&D Beyond. Um, next, we have, uh, obviously, those of you that want to roll physical dice, that's cool. Uh, Bolt. Natural 20. Whoa. Uh, for nice. 21. It's like six natural points for me. Four, It's all with this one Crazy. dice. Sierra. You, you can use the next one. 13. Okay. <laughs> Zinrick. 18. Greg, hurry. Six. Okay. All right. Bolt, you are up first. Mm-hmm. Okay. First thing is I'm gonna fire. Th this wolf didn't drop, did it? No. Okay. I'm gonna fire lightning launcher from the tree at the wolf with advantage. Oh, it's the blue one this time. Natural 20. Oh wow. God. Jesus. Holy Jeez. Okay. Forge gate me. <laughs> so with multiple damage die, yeah. it would be the max of every die yeah. plus the roll. So, what do you what do you what, you what are you casting? Lightning launcher. Which is how much damage? It's one d six, but I can make it two d six once per turn. Then, so it would be twelve. Yeah. And then well, and then roll two d six. Okay. Plus Jeez. the Whoa, That was upside down. Okay, so twelve. So five. So twenty three damage Holy. for the first attack. <laughs> fires out in the direction of this thing and you watch as it and yelps out in yeah is it is it still up oh it's still up okay i attack again with okay. the lightning launcher um 18 to hit it's a hit okay and this time it's gonna be less no oh. <laughs> six six more six more this thing is just getting pummeled and like smoke and but it still seems to be moving. Hmm. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Jeez, Zen, you're up. Seeing it, um, I smile um, as I scrape the um, the swords together, uh, and there's a, a a wind that starts to uh, surround me a little bit as I cast haste on myself. Okay. Sorry about it. Uh, which oh gosh, let me do this real quick. And meet me. There we go. Uh, that's my action. The hasted action that I get from that, I will uh, while I will move swiftly towards this wolf okay. um, with my 100 feet of movement. And I will attack it uh, with advantage. my... Don't yes, forget dancing lights. Advantage. Or sorry, um, yep. fairy fire. So all those yep. attacks should have been with an advantage. Mine were. Okay. That is math. 25 point, no, 24 to hit. That's a hit. Jeez. That is, that's super gone. Oh, right. That is nine points of a slashing demolish. Nine? Um, nine. And I will stay right next to it. Okay. Uh -huh. As you come down with your attacks, you're fairly confident with the force that you put behind the sword but it doesn't seem to do the damage that you expected it to as okay. you come down on this wolf, hmm. which kind of sets you back a little bit. Um, and it, it you, you kind of can't, and it was kind of like, it's almost like patting out, it, it rolling itself around to try to get rid of the flames and the damage mm -hmm. that it's that it suffered, uh, missing patches of hair and so on. And as you come down on it, um, yeah, it, 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 yeah, it just didn't do as much as you, you had imagined. Um, then, May I ask one quick thing? Yeah. Um, I am a swordsman. I know when something doesn't go. I know what I can do, and I know when something doesn't do what I think it should do. Yeah. With my knowledge, do I assume that this wolf isn't just a normal wolf? Because normal wolves don't technically have the ability to just Nature shrug check. off damage. <laughs> that is a dirty 20. Um, yeah, so with a dirty 20, uh, it doesn't seem natural. Let's just say that. Or not anything no. that you've ever heard of. 
Yeah, I would just say, interesting, it doesn't... Uh, no, I'll, I'll say, interesting, it shrugged off some of the damage. Okay. You watch Sorry. as as Gaziel um, looks over Yanil and takes, uh, kind of hefts her her hammer and turns in the direction of the of the action, uh, and you see just a little like lightning kind of crackle over her hammer, um, and it kind of illuminates her face as she stares in that direction. Syria, you're up. Okay, uh, so towards that same wolf that's up that I hit in the first place. Yeah. Still up, yes. Yep, yeah, and Zin's right beside still it. Still surrounded by a fair fire. Yeah. Okay, so that is a 25 to hit for a firebolt. That's a hit. And that is, ooh, not that great. Uh, nine points of fire damage. Okay. All right. Fire damage careens in the direction uh, as it kind of ignites at your feet on this wolf, uh, Zin. Um, sending kind of sparks and, uh, not sparks. Oh, sorry, I forgot yep. to add the extra three points for the okay. genie stuff. Okay, and it, and it, this wolf, as you hit it with its sword, it kind of turned in your direction, Zin, and as it gets mm -hmm. hit by this firebolt, it like goes plummeting, and it rolls for a little while, and as it comes to rest, it starts to contort, and you hear cracking and breaking, and over a couple moments, you see a un, a naked human lying where this wolf was. And that is where we're going to end the session for this evening. Ah, Jay. Well, <laughs> we fighting some human wolfies. Something. <laughs> You're fighting something, something. Human wolfies. <laughs> human wolfies. That's what they're called, right? That's the yeah, technical that's, term? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's, that's yeah. it. That, that's, that's, that's canon. That's, that's Omega's way of, of not metagaming. <laughs> you just, just change what they're called. <laughs> some, human some, wolfies. Some wolfie wears. Some, yeah, some wolf, something. Wait, wolf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's great. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Julian, for uh, jumping in. Obviously, Julian will be here for uh, at least another session. We'll, we'll see how much longer Gregory will last um, <laughs> in this wonderful group. He knows exactly what he's doing. Yes, exactly. Uh, make sure to tune in on Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, for uh, the first match in the semifinal round featuring our very own Nora Ibrahim hey. in the role. Esmeralda, um, sh actually, you're wearing your jersey. Can you show us the back I of am. that jersey? She always wears her jersey. I can. Uh, if you I want your own jersey, man. check out MythRollArmory.com for your custom Champions of the Realm jersey. She actually has Nora Ibrahim on the back. Ah. Ibrahim. Very, very cool. Anyways, so check it out. It's going to be awesome. Um, you can check out the pre-fight interview on uh, ChampionsOfTheRealm.com or our YouTube channel. Um, very excited for this match, um, and congratulations oh, to Nora for coming as far as she has um, thus far. Uh, Thursday night, check out Aftermath. Again, we will be featuring someone from um, Champions of the Realm, as well as talking about this episode of Tides. Um, and then, of course, join us next Monday for the next episode of Tides. We are moving to a pre-recorded format at some point in, in the near future. That doesn't change anything for people at home. We are playing live off the floor like we would this, but we're just filming a bunch in a day because of COVID and because of travel and because of Canadian blizzards and all that stuff. So it'll mean that we have better tech and, and, and less... Anyways, it's it's just better. We'll still all be around. in chat. We'll still be in chat. We'll still be in chat. So and I'll be in chat for a change. Yeah. So we'll <laughs> actually be able to, to chat through the episode and stuff. And we'll also jump into um uh into Discord in the break as well during those Monday nights to chat with you folks and talk about the episode as well. But I don't know exactly when that's happening. We're gonna talk about it after actually after when we uh, go offline tonight. Uh, cast don't go anywhere until we have a have a chat. Um, about availability. But anyways, thank you everyone for watching. Stay tuned. Um, we just finished a bunch of concepts that we put together for future content. Um, and the uh, wheels are turning and the engine is moving towards awesome, amazing content. Um, and, you know, Inside Baseball, we... I say Inside Baseball. I don't even watch baseball, really. Um, but, <laughs> but um, you know, we did something with Champions of the Realm and, and, and opened up kind of the possibilities of what D&D &D may actually look like that isn't necessarily this. We love this, but we wanted to try new 
awesome things. And that was our first way of doing that. And because of the success and the way that people are enjoying it, we're looking to do that a lot more. And we're looking to really open up and 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 define D&D in so many different ways that are accessible to a lot of different people um, and, uh, and digestible in different forms of content. Um, that we uh, know and love. So anyways, love you guys so much. Have a wonderful night. If you like what you saw, the usual, subscribe and hit the bell icon and follow us on Twitch and all that spiel that has to happen at the end of the show. You guys have a wonderful night. We love you very much. Thank you, Julian. Look forward to getting Joel back wherever he is. Bye! Bye! Bye.